Well, he did, and he didn't do a bad job in that ball game against UCLA. He's a number three quarterback for Arizona, not an option quarterback. Throws the football very well. Their stats right there, six for 14, 88 yards, and uh, one interception. So he's got a challenge tonight. He's not very big. Looking over those big rushing four down linemen of Miami will be tough for him to handle. They'll roll him out of the pocket. We'll see some one-back sets and some eye formation from Arizona, much like Miami as far as offensive sets. Speaking of Miami and my offensive sets, you take, think about Miami football and you think about quarterbacks. They've had a long line of great quarterbacks, and uh, this young man that they've got starting for them tonight will not disappoint. Well, he fits the mold. He's 6'3 and about 211 or 212, follows in that same big, strong quarterback. He's running that scheme that Dennis Erickson ran at Washington State that gave everybody in the Pac-10 all kinds of trouble, and he was running it with less skilled players. Now at Miami, he's got great players running that same scheme and so the challenge is that much more difficult for Arizona to handle that one setback and that great passing machine led by Toretta. Lots of tools for Miami. They're all here tonight. We'll see it all unfold in just a moment. We'll have the kickoff right after these messages. John Ricky seven consecutive point after attempts. Well, kickoff for Miami. They won the toss and elected to defer. Here comes Carlos and the gang, and we're underway at Arizona Stadium. Terry Vaughn takes it two yards away from the end line, gets a break, gets some space, and runs in to one of his own blockers. Matter of fact, you could almost give the tackle to Craig Gilbert, a fullback who's out there playing special teams. But Arizona starts with the football at the 20-yard line. Billy Prickett, the senior, as we mentioned, who had a baptism of fire last week. Didn't have a bad afternoon, all things considered, as we take a look at Prickett. Johnson, Antoine Carter will be carrying the ball quite a bit tonight. Vaughn, Lovett, and Julian. The backs, or excuse me, backs will be forwarded by Arizona's guards and tackles, and they are a bit thin tonight. As Manny Ott starts at center for Arizona, a freshman, snaps it to Prickett, and some room for Carter, and surprise! Well, two, two true freshmen on that offensive line for Arizona, and there was a true freshman carrying the football. Ten true freshmen playing for Arizona. For Miami, maybe one will see some action. The Miami Hurricanes with an outstanding defense, and that's an understatement, allowing just over seven points a game. They run four down linemen and the three linebackers, and they've got a great defensive backfield led by Darrell Williams. We'll get into him a little bit later. As we look at the Wildcats picking up a first down, first and 10 at the 39-yard line, a 19-yard pickup for Carter on the first carry. Here comes Antoine again. Counters through the middle. Another good pickup for the Wildcats. <laughs> There's going to be a big crowd here tonight because it's family weekend here at Arizona's campus, and they are already delighted on the first series. Well, it's great. Arizona be able to move the football. They haven't been very able to do that the last couple of ball games. And really, what they've done all week, they've tried to get more physical. They've been running the eye formation, some power stuff, and, and trying to get that offensive line to make contact and really become physical. And so far, early in the ball game, they've penetrated, and the offensive line has really gotten off the ball well for the Arizona Wildcats. Eye formation again. They come out in the eye, and Prickett doesn't like what he sees. Arizona had both Lovett and Lockhart wide to the left, and Prickett calls a timeout. Well, Miami plays a basic 40 with the three linebackers. They're going to take a timeout on the field. We'll do so as well. We'll see in about a minute. A 90 seconds into the game, Billy Prickett forced to use a timeout. So far, Arizona moving forward on two fine running plays by Antoine Carter. Two yards, or excuse me, two rushes for 23 yards already. Two plays. Prickett came up the line of scrimmage on the last play. Miami plays that four down lineman, and they moved the middle linebacker in there and showed them a five. And uh, I suppose Arizona's been spending time against that 40 defense and those three strong linebackers that Miami has. You know, another interesting facet about Prickett's ascendancy to the throne here is that Billy was the quarterback who relayed plays into Malaulu and Levy earlier this season. So the guy who was basically the third base coach is in the ball game now. He's a good, tough kid. His dad's a, a football coach at Rincon High School here in the city. So he's grown up with football all his life, has a pretty good understanding. Here we see Arizona single back, much like uh, the Miami Hurricanes run. Prickett gives it to Vaughn. Vaughn squirts ahead through and up about two, maybe three yards. Darren Smith, a 6'1", 228-pound junior. 
from Miami makes the stop. Uh, Some another. people feel he's their best defensive football player. He's up for the Buskis final. He's in the final 10 already this season. Well, his story is an absolutely incredible one, and we'll get to it in just a little bit. So Vaughn now this. being pressed into the tailback position for Arizona. We'll also see him as a receiver. Love it. Again out wide. Here comes Carter. Carter's got enough for the first down, loses the football, and the Hurricanes pick it up. Or we'll see if they're going to say is down. The, Ar the Wildcats are making the argument, Barry Julian, that he was down and the ground caused the fumble, but that's not according to the referees. Darren Smith made the hit. Mark Caesar picks it up. Well, Antoine Carter, a true freshman, going to be a good running back for Arizona, maintains good balance. Looks like the ground caused that fumble. But this is what Arizona could not afford to do against this kind of a football team. They couldn't give up the football. They can't throw interceptions, no blocks. They almost have a play a perfect game, and then that might not be enough. All right. Miami takes over on the 46-yard line. Single, they call him a ghost back. No backs now behind Toretta. He throws out in the flat, and it's off the fingertips of Daryl Spencer. And that'll bring up second down. And I tell you what, there's a lot of people whose emotions are riding on every play tonight in the stadium. Well, what Arizona did now, nobody's really done this against Miami in, in the tapes that we have seen, is when that ghost back shows up or no back at all, they're going to blitz. They're going to come with seven. Searcy just getting back into the lineup. Leon at 6'3", 285 pounds, a big boy. Broke his thumb in the opening game of the year against Arkansas. Second down and 10 for Miami. The give back inside. Tackle from behind that time is Martin Patton. And that gets him shaken up a bit. Jamal Lee comes up from his linebacker position. As the Wildcats make the stop on defense, two plays so far, and Miami's got a negative yardage already. Well, Jamal Lee has just been moved to outside linebacker. He's an inside linebacker, J.C. transfer. He's moved outside. He has good speed. Not exceptionally big, about 7.15, but here we see defensive Arizona's defensive lineup. Bray and the outside linebacker is also a change for this week. Well, an interesting third down and 12 for Miami. Already with 12 minutes and 25 seconds in the quarter remaining. Toretto's going to air it out, and it is overthrown. They had Kevin Williams flying down the field. That's what he does best, but Toretta overthrew him. And That's Arizona's going to take over after this punt. <laughs> That's pretty tough to do, David. Uh, Williams runs about a 4-2. They hit him time. He broke the school record. So they just fly him down the middle. They did convert against Arkansas in the first ball game of the season for a 99-yard pass play in a similar type situation. Well, a, a series and an exchange a game does not make. However, the Wildcats are off to a good start. Vaughn back deep. The punt delivered by Snyder. Vaughn bottles it but collects it again at about the 14-yard line. The Wildcats had better get some sticky on those fingers right now. Well, I don't think during the ballgame they can afford to give up the football to Miami too often. In fact, I don't think they can give it up at all. But Vaughn, one of the better punt returners in the country, we're seeing the best punt returner in the country, but he's wearing a white jersey tonight. That's Kevin Williams, who ranks number one. Vaughn ranks number 10 in the country. So there's two guys that can catch the football and run with it. But great coverage by Miami on that kick. It's interesting watching punt returners. It's that, that very, very narrow line they walk between being gutsy and being foolish. They bring the blitz. Arizona gives it to Carter. He squirts ahead, maybe picking up one yard, depending on the spot. So Antoine, after the couple of big gains on his first two, actually three big gains, is stopped by Darren Smith and Eric Miller, the right tackle. Now, coaches feel Miami is a good, sound, solid defensive team. They don't really blitz a lot. Those four down linemen are so tough and quick. They run their own blitzes. They create enough pressure. In fact, they keep a stat, quarterback pressures. And no, but Arizona does not keep. So now they go with four down linemen, bring up one of those outside linebackers for five. Wildcats out of the eye on second and nine. Well, they found Antoine Carter. of Hurricanes find Antoine Carter. That swirl was headed by Kevin Patrick and Rusty McDeeris. Make that Rusty Medderis. Well, this is a very physical Miami football team. And that's Arizona where they have not been a physical football team going into this season. They have been previously in the past 
three or four years, but uh, this is some area that they really need to gather some strength, physical strength against a very, very aggressive Miami defense. Ryder brings up third and ten. Prickett for his first pass of the night. Going to air it. And it's intercepted across the halfway line. Picked up, or picked off, as you say, across the way by Ryan McNeil. That is his third interception of the year. Prickett's second thrown. And Miami, for the second time, gets the ball just shy of the 50-yard line. Not too far from where they got it last time. And that's not too bad, probably, really. They probably wouldn't have netted much more with a kick than that. And then you don't have to kick it to Williams this way. Here comes Prickett again. I guess he just lets it out, everything he's got. Much like Toretta's last pass, but it just hung up there a little too long. And probably one of the weaknesses going into the season that was felt at Miami's defensive back here. They lost two cornerbacks to the pros. But they've replaced those with some very quick players. All right, Gino Toretta. 96 of 174 passes now. And the Wildcat defense is up for this one as Jamal Lee crosses the line, makes the stop in the backfield of Miami, pulling down Daryl Spencer. Well, they leave him a gap. Jamal Lee, number 15, playing that outside linebacker spot. Good quickness. He's about six out of Pasadena Junior College. Came to the Wildcats this year. 6'2", 215. All right, second and 13. Second consecutive series where the Hurricanes have been backed up by Arizona. Toretta goes deep again, trying to pick on the Wildcat defense. He did just about the same thing Cricket did. <laughs> These teams are consistent so far. Kevin Williams, the speed burner, was the intended receiver again. Well, they like to run those vertical routes because when you look at their receivers, and that's probably the great strength of this football team, and most coaches agree, they're 4-2, 4, 4-3-5, four, 4-4. Four, four. There's nobody under 4-5, well, I mean over 4-5 in that receiver core. All right, I'll give you an example. Leon Searcy is 6'3", 285 pounds. He's a tackle. He runs the 40 and 4.98. Big third down in 13, early on in the game. 9.56 remaining in the first quarter. Toretto throws up to his tight end, Joe Moore, and Moore is stopped immediately by Heath Bray. And the Wildcats have held a good stop by Bray. Boy, you talk about a matchup there. Bray at 6'3". 209, Moore at 6'3", 217. That's Moore's 11th pass. They have 15 receivers who have caught passes for Miami, so you don't know who to cover. Paul Snyder averages 39 yards a kick for Miami. Good rush put on that time by Arizona. The punt goes through the end zone. Arizona will take over on its 20-yard line. Well, two exchanges now. The Wildcats have not been hurt so much. Last time they get the ball back inside their 15. This time they're back out at the 20-yard line. Well, this is Snyder. He's a returning starter. Average is 39. His long is 47. Kevin Johnson had a nice discussion with him. 47 yards on that particular punt. And we resume. First play through the middle, pickup of about three. Craig Gilbert from Overbelt High School in San Jose, California, stopped by Eric Miller. Gilbert's getting his first start for Arizona. He's a senior. He's been on special teams. He's had to fill in the fullback because Hampton, the number one fullback, is hurt. Billy Johnson, who's been running that fullback position, is also hurt. He hasn't even dressed out today. Levy, the second string quarterback, did not dress out. Griffith, the, the first string tight end, did not dress out. Tagawihi, first string right tackle, did not dress out. Yeah, there's a lot of kids in civilian clothing along the far sideline. Here's Vaughn. It gets away from him. Who's going to pick it up? Obviously, Miami's going to point one direction. Vaughn was the ball carrier and somehow the Wildcats came up with the football again it's determined it's Arizona ball we'll see if they picked up a couple of yards on it here's another look at Vaughn well, two fumbles already in the first uh, seven minutes of this first quarter in Arizona against Miami just can't really afford to give the ball as long as they're going to fumble it and recover it they're all right but 
They also lose a little yardage. This is the kind of game where you can't turn the ball over. You can't throw in set interceptions. You can't get any kicks blocked. You almost have to play a perfect kind of football game, and then your chances of winning are probably not very good. It'll bring up a third down and two to go. Cricket gives on third and two to Carter. Carter squirts ahead. It depends on the mark. Off tackle to the left side, running behind John Fina. And Ryan McNeil came up to make the makes the stop. We'd like to welcome all of you on the Shining Sea on the East Coast. Joining us now, Arizona and Miami. No score, 750 remaining in the first quarter. I'm Dave Sitton along with Bruce Larson at Arizona Stadium. We'll catch up on what's going on so far. Miami has so far recovered an Arizona fumble and intercepted an Arizona pass and has yet to score. Something unusual for those of you who live on the East Coast. Okay, Arizona with the first down now on their third possession. Pass is laid out and knocked down by a host of Hurricanes. Rusty Medeiros at 6'3 and 248, knocking down Prickett's pass. Well, this guy's one of the best in the country, and that's the difficulty with Arizona running this kind of an offense with a quarterback who's maybe six feet or six one, throwing that ball over those big six, three, and four linemen. You need a quarterback like Toretta if you're going to run a passing kind of an offense, and so that's another negative for Arizona, trying to run this kind of an offense, and they're almost forced to with Billy Prickett uh, trying to throw. He has to throw between those big linemen, and that's a tough challenge for him. Single back behind Prickett on first down, gives to the middle. Good blocks opened up for Craig Gilbert. And Gilbert picks up maybe eight yards on the play before he's hit by Hurley Brown. And that's almost a new offensive line. There's Nick Finney on Ganofa with a good block. Paul Stamey there, number 79, is a true freshman. So Arizona's offensive line, and especially Pat Hill, who's the offensive coordinator as well as the line coach, has to be pleased with these first eight minutes of this first quarter. Arizona is moving the football on the ground, something they have not been able to do in their previous two ball games. Out of the eyeball, and they give it to Gilbert again, and he is met and spanked and slapped to the ground by Kevin Patrick. And that's a little bit of a mismatch. Patrick at 252 pounds, that sophomore leveled him. Well, that's a tough challenge. Uh, you know, Arizona has not been an offense that's been able to run the football for six or seven minutes down the field in a sustained drive. And against this kind of a defense, I don't think anybody in the country's been able to do that. So they have to strike quickly somehow, and that's kind of dangerous too, trying to throw that football against the very, very good secondary. All right, the Hurricanes have called a timeout. We will too. We'll be back to Arizona Stadium following these important messages. Heads up. The 70 degree mark, humidity about 20%. Quite a pleasant night for football. The Wildcats on fourth down and three inside their own territory. Going to punt formation with Adam Grand. And Grand gets a spiral that goes out of bounds inside the 30 yard line. You can see Arizona's strategy. Why in the world would they ever want to kick it to Kevin Williams? Oh, Grand kicks it out of bounds. Well, the number one putt returner in the country, and he's watching their following TV, and the Miami Hurricanes, you saw him run one back 90 yards against uh, Penn State a couple of weeks ago. He also has one against Long Beach last week, 63 yards, and then he ran one that uh, he thought he'd scored, I guess, and he was tackled on the one-yard line. So he's very, very dangerous. That'll give you an idea just how dominating the Hurricanes have been this season. On first down, they give the ball inside. The biggest gain on the ground so far is a penalty flag comes out of the backfield. The ball carrier for the Hurricanes at that time was Daryl Spencer. I don't know, it wasn't. It was Martin Patton. Thank you for picking that up, guys. And the penalty, as this crowd indicates, is against the Hurricanes. Well, the one back, the one injury that uh, Miami does have is that Daryl Spencer, their best running back, is out. He's hurt. He runs at 4-4. Uh, He's a strong physical player. He's been that one back and that one set. But Patton is quicker than he is, and Patton's a better receiver. Holy, holy. Offense, still first down. It's our referee for tonight's game, Gordon Reese. That's the first time we've seen him in action tonight with a penalty flag. With just over six minutes remaining in the first quarter. So now the Hurricanes, as they have on all of their possessions thus far, find themselves 
behind, with more than 10 to go for a first down. First and 18. Now the ball spotted on the 20 yard line. They stay with a run back. Tight end, usually to the left or to the right. In this case, he's on the right. Single back. The throw is Toretta. Patton out of the backfield was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up a second down and 18 for the Hurricanes. Just to show you, they throw to everybody. Patton is their number two receiver. He's caught 15 passes. One for a touchdown, long 42. They like to throw those short screens to him. Very good receiver. He's averaging 3.4 yards on the ground. He's a pretty nifty little total offensive man for the Hurricanes. We come up now, once again, second down and 18. 550 remain in the first quarter. Single back behind Toretta. Rifles one through the middle. And he gets Horace Copeland, his first reception of the night, his 16th reception of the year. Daryl Morrison came up to make the stop. Copeland, 6'3", 200 pounds. They think he's their best receiver. And that's saying a lot because it's hard to choose from those four or five receivers they have. So it's a real challenge for the Arizona secondary who will be playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. And when you have to cover guys that are bigger than you are, he's a lot like Rock Michelle from UCLA. On the first down play, Patton scores through to meet Heath Bray. Pickup of about six yards. We'll see how they spot it. Make it. Oh, they spot it back now. Okay, pickup of about three yards. Make it second down and seven. with a single back. Patton staying home to block. Throws outside, trying to pick up Chris Jones that time. Jones slips down. People in Miami are seeing this turf, I think, for the first time. And a couple of years ago, it's a natural tip way turf, Bermuda hybrid. And it was rated by Sports Illustrated oh, about five or six years ago as one of the top playing surfaces in the country, in case you're wondering about that sort of thing. At that time, it was Purdue in this particular field here. Heath Ray, number 14, is getting caught a little bit inside and covering that uh, down and out pattern. Miami hasn't thrown it real well. It's been open, but they haven't been able to complete it. Third and seven, Toretta. Lays it across the middle. Caught by Coleman Bell, a junior, who plays tied in just across the middle as a safety valve. He picks up the first down for the Hurricanes. Tony, Tony Bowie made the stop. You see great protection by the Miami line. Going into the season, they had to rebuild that line. They had two starters back, which you can see they've already done that. And Toretta is getting lots and lots of time to throw the football. You know, if that continues uh, throughout the ball game, he's going to his success rate of 50% will will stay at that level. Under five minutes remain in the first quarter. Toretta on first down, going to pass again. Again, lots of time. Fires a bullet over to the near sideline. Again, Horace Copeland at the other end of that telephone call. And right now, Arizona's playing a lot of zone defense. They're just rushing the full. Start of the ball game, they did the blitz a little bit. And whether they'll stay with this pattern, zone, zone, as long as they're fairly successful with it, give up the short ones. Now as they get down closer to the scoring area, they'll have to change their defensive scheme a little bit. Five yards on the previous play, second and five. Here's Patton on the near side. And I believe he was knocked out inside the 30-yard line. They indicate it is a first down. Tony Bowie, who plays shortstop on Arizona's baseball team, makes the stop. And single back. Now just a deep draw, or deep handoff. They catch Heath Bray, outside linebacker inside. Good coverage by Bowie, who's the number one tackler for Arizona. He and Bray. Linebackers and strong safety. They both play that same position. That's not really a nice stat if you're a defensive coordinator. You don't want your free safety making a lot of tackles. Toretta on another first down. Fires across the middle again. Ball is caught by Daryl Spencer. So Spencer, the junior, has now caught his 16th pass of the year. That's the incredible thing, coach, as you continue to 
look at Miami's potent offensive weaponry. You've got to cover everybody. Some, you know, pro coaches and everybody say that the receiving core is the strength of this football team. It's just unbelievable the speed they have. And not only speed, but good hands. And when they spread you all over the field like they do, and it's really tough to cover. You're almost forced man to man. And Toretta is getting the ball to them. They've all got an excess of 15 catches. Arizona shows blitz. Toretta going for the corner. On the coverage that time was Richard Holt for the Wildcats. Copeland was the intended receiver. That'll bring up a second and ten. Arizona went with their 80 defense, and that meant man-to-man -man coverage by Holt and Morrison out there, and they both did a good job on that. Miami compensated, picked it up, put their fullback out uh, onto the tight end area for more protection. Threw it quick. Dennis Erickson, a former Pac-10 coach at Washington State. One of the few coaches to take a team in his first year to a national championship. He's done that. Going down the sideline, fighting for more. <laughs> Good banging that time. Larry Jones, fullback. Well, he's the backup for Spencer, and he's a big horse. He's a lot like uh, Spencer is, about six feet, 244 pounds, a redshirt freshman. They claim he's the strongest player on that Miami football team. It's quite a little pop he gave them there, huh? And Bowie's not a very big guy, 5'10", about 180 pounds. Big third down play for Arizona. The 50,000 plus here tonight getting into it a little bit. They're looking for flags. There are none. Horace Copeland was the intended receiver. Daryl Morrison on the coverage. And for one of the few times, the team will be happy to see Carlos work to trot onto the field. Well, they may be giving up three, but that was great coverage one on one. Maybe recovered as good a receiver as there is in the country. Although in the Pac-10, you know, there's some great receivers. LaChapelle from UCLA and Washington has some. So Arizona's had some, had some experience covering good people. Worked as 8 of 9 this year kicking field goals. Make it 9 of 10 as he delivers. Field goal is from and that one, a 28-yard field goal to Carlos Credit. We'll tell you a lot more about him a little bit later. But the Hurricanes go up top. Miami 3, Arizona nothing. since 1929. Now the seating capacity of 56,187. They once threw 58,000 in here. That was for Arizona State back in 1982. The kickoff, that's uncharacteristic. Worked up, punches the ball directly out of bounds. So they'll tee it up and try it again, and perhaps the Wildcats will take it out of bounds with the new rule. I think they would at the 35. The, this uh, stadium, by the way, at first seated 7,000. It looked like a high school field back then. You can see the photographs, but they added that extension you see over there back in 1976. That added 17,000 fans, or seats, I should say. By the kicking team, offensive team takes the ball at the 35-yard line, first and 10. And the Wildcats have elected to take the ball at the 35. And as we mentioned, Sports Illustrated says it has one of the finest playing services in the country. And it's right smack on campus, just on the south end of the University campus here in Tucson. All right, 3.33 remain. Wildcats with the first down now. Hand the ball off. Arizona with impressive running tonight. Craig Gilbert surges ahead. You know, it's interesting, as you poured through the statistical data about the Miami defense, you wondered if Arizona might get three yards tonight. And already they've been able to establish a reasonable running game. Well, you know, what fans are going to do, they're going to compare this game with the Washington game. Uh, Arizona's the only team that plays both of these teams. And against Washington, half the plays that Arizona ran were for minus yardage. They're much better so far in this ball game. There you saw the Miami scoring drive, 13 plays, 61 yards, using just two minutes and 47 seconds. And that's part of the Miami story this season. Carter, who had some big gains on the first possession for Arizona is stuffed on the left side of the line. Antoine, just a freshman, 5'9", 171 pounder from Pacoima, California. And he's given a good whack by Jesse Armstead. Sideline warning. 
And you can see what happens when defense. Miami puts those two linebackers in there and rushes them along with those four down linemen. It's just almost impossible for Arizona to run the football. And Billy Prickett really is going to have to change that play at the line of scrimmage and throw some dump passes to take away that good pressure. The Hurricanes have been issued a sideline warning by referee Gordon Reese. They've had too many youngsters up on the wide area there. <laughs> So a slight delay. I think they all want to jump in and get in the ball game. What do you think? You know, they keep creeping out. You can't stand on the white stuff, guys. The Big white third zone. down for Arizona now. They've owned no passes completed so far. One interception. And they're coming with five. Well, the give is inside. Not for much. Probably a yard shy as far as the first down goes. Once again, Jesse Armstead makes the stop. He gets some help from Mark Caesar. Anthony Hamlet. That's right, you heard correctly. Caesar and Hamlet play in the defense for Miami. And in case you're wondering, you're already ahead of us. Yes, they do have a guy named Shakespeare. Looks like Arizona's going to go for it. One yard against this tough Miami defense. Or maybe a quick kick here. Got Terry Vaughn deep. We'll see what they do. It is. It's going to be the quick kick to Vaughn. Now Vaughn fakes and falls down. So the Wildcats were going to throw a perhaps throw a fake quick kick at Miami and it doesn't work and an inopportune moment for that to occur for Arizona as Miami will take over with excellent field position well, that's like a fumble or turnover really too much pressure can't handle those four down linemen of Miami they're just uh, exceptional with great quickness and Arizona with their offensive line uh, really banged up and with a lot of inexperienced people a couple true freshmen playing in there probably too much to ask to, to contain that kind of a defense with the four starters who are announced missing tonight Arizona has lost 17 of their starters from the start of the season minute 45 remain under a lot of pressure that time was Toretta to say the least Daryl Spencer was the intended receiver well, what's happened now Arizona every time that uh, Miami runs that goes back or runs that one setback in motion they're putting everybody up on the line of scrimmage going automatic man-to-man -man coverage and blitzing eight people second and ten for the Hurricanes great field position after taking over on downs from Arizona a give to the middle the ball carrier is Patton. Mark surges ahead for a pickup of about two, maybe three. That'll bring up a third down situation for the Hurricanes. And a third and seven for Miami, you know, it's like third and two for Arizona. But with all the horses they got and all the things they can do. Well, if you like trends, Arizona is about a minute and 13 seconds away from proving that they can play with Miami, at least for a little while. And that's going to hurt. Three down. Somehow he kept in bounds. Yeah, we'll see how they do this. That was Lamar Thomas who caught the football and danced down the sideline. And the referees meet. I was going to make the point, Coach, that this year Miami in the first quarter has been outscoring its opponents 48-3. to three. And with under a minute left in the first quarter, Arizona might hold Miami to three points. Now, most of their games have been over, I suppose, except for the Penn State game. That's really been the case. Very explosive, and you just saw a Illegal guy motion, the football. Offense, offside, defense. Henry's offset, replay the down, still be third down. Well, we saw Arizona jump offside, but quite frankly, did not notice the illegal motion. However, they picked it up, and that's all that counts, and Arizona dodges a bullet. They did. Miami threw the ball to their slowest player. That's Lamar Thomas. He only runs the 40 and 4.5. Oh, take him out. He has a vertical jump of 40 inches. He's in the 6'9 high jumper, and most of the receivers have those same kind of skills trips to the far side. Man in motion this time is Patton. Back through the middle and getting hit in a big way is Kevin Williams and the Wildcats will bring Carlos Huerta onto the field again. 
Go figure. Tony Bowie and Mike Skurlock make the hit. You talk about a, an, an improbable start to a game. This has got to be it. As work is on for his second field goal attempt. Again, a blitz by Arizona. It makes him hurry the pass, and he has to throw short. And with long yardage for third down, a good chance. Huerta, as usual, on the money. And one of the finest college kickers you're ever going to find pumps it through. And Miami takes a 6-0 lead as we end the first quarter. And as I mentioned, that's uh, <laughs> many points fewer than Miami's accustomed to scoring in the first 15 minutes. All right, we've played one. We've got three to go. Don't go away. I'm a single parent. Couldn't kinds of conversations going on on the Miami sideline right now. They wonder how they could come to Arizona Stadium and score but six points. Here's Huerta again. His teammates call him the Iceman after he won the kicking position. Ices it right through after <laughs> just a little bit. Here he is again. We return right now. And he bolts the kickoff to begin the second quarter all the way out of the end zone. So the Wildcats will take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Finish up the thought about Huerta. Huerta is from Columbus, Ohio. And in his freshman season, as we take a look at Ibis, we'll back to him a little bit. Thank you. It's nice to be inside there. But uh, Huerta, in his freshman season, kicked a field goal to beat Michigan. And, of course, that makes everybody in Columbus, Ohio, feel real good. So even though he was playing for a Florida school, he was still big news back home. All right, Arizona with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Brand new quarter, 15 minutes on the clock. Cricket in his second start ever as a Wildcat quarterback gives to Carter. Carter sweeping outside, picking up maybe four yards before he's hit by Darren Smith. Again, one of those outstanding linebackers. There you take a look at Darren. Went to Norland High School in Miami. Boy, what a story he is. He will graduate in three and a half years could possibly go into the NFL draft will probably stick around because he wants to get a graduate degree and that after tragically losing his father when he was very young and, and a very unfortunate to say the least situation early on in his life Carter ahead good for a few yards before Rusty Medeiros Jesse Armstead combined to make the tackle well, Miami really blitzing Arizona, even though they are concerned about the pass, and that really disrupts the running lanes. Uh, I think before long, Arizona needs to put the football in the air. They're 0 for 2, one interception to loosen up that good, tough defense. You talked about uh, Smith. You know, they got a lot of juniors. They got 12 juniors. Some coaches say the best team about this thing about this Miami team is the 12 juniors they got, and they could lose a lot of those guys into the draft next year. It's possible. Cricket from the shotgun, running out of time. And now out of the pocket, will he get there? It's a race, and he wins the race. This from a kid who last week, as a senior, a pre-med student, makes his first start in the Rose Bowl. And now tonight, the first time he drops back in shotgun position, he's got one of the best defenses in the country training on him, and somehow he gets away. He's not a great runner, and that's why he's not running any option. Arizona's an option team, but that's why they don't run the option with Prickard in there. But again, the shotgun formation, Arizona put it in this week to maybe help him get some of his passes away. The give is to Carter. Antoine may have found the line of scrimmage again. Kevin Patrick was there to meet him. Well, offensively, Arizona's been able to accumulate some yardage. Miami gives up 105 yards a game rushing. Arizona must be close to uh, maybe 50-60 here in this first quarter. Miami's the number 15th ranked team in the nation defense against the rush. Well, Arizona played against the rush uh, two weeks ago at Washington with three, and Washington's number one defensive team in the nation against the rush. So maybe they learned some things against the Huskies. Cricket out of the shotgun across the middle and it's dropped by Julian yeah you don't want to get up after that happens Barry Julian a junior from Tempe dropped a strike delivered by Prickett well thrown pass and right in the hands
Julian getting his first start because Griffith is uh, injured. Gives him a little more time to set up and recognize his receivers. Wide open. Maybe a little concerned about that hit coming up from behind him. <laughs> Can't hear those footsteps, though. And Arizona's got a freshman making that snap. That's Manny out. He was a freshman in high school. He's a true freshman. A lot of Arizona freshmen seen action this year. Cricket shuttles the ball to the middle to Terry Vaughn. And Vaughn's got a little bit of room. Brings the ball out to the 39-yard line. It's short of the first down on third and 11. Now, I'll tell you what, Vaughn was about one ankle away from breaking that for big yardage. Well, he was. Now, Arizona again put in this play during the week. Out of the shotgun. Very well timed. Great tackle here by number eight. Gay Newton. Touchdown saving tackle, one on one. And Vaughn's a very, very good runner. Curly Brown is that number eight, a senior who made the play. Here's Adam Grand in the puck for the Wildcats. And they're not going to let Williams have it again. He's going to kick it out of bounds on a bounce and well placed just outside the 20 yard line. So the Hurricanes will take over again. Good punt by Grand. They keep it out of Williams' hands. We'll bring it back here in just a moment. In 12 minutes and three seconds remain. Miami out in front of Arizona, 6-0. As you see, the Hurricanes have not been particularly kind to teams that are unranked as the Wildcats are, although in Arizona's favor. Arizona's won seven of its last 12 against ranked teams, although they've been on a four-game losing scheme to those types of opponents. Miami, excuse me, the Washington Huskies who won again today. Arizona playing pretty much nickel defense. Five defensive backs in the ballgame at all times. Single back in back of Toretta is Patton. He's in the pattern. They go to Patton. And he's good for about eight or nine yards. That's the problem you get. You try to cover them all, and then the guy like Patton slides out of the backfield. He's a running back, about 6'1", 196, a sophomore, but he's the number two receiver for the uh, Miami Hurricanes. Great speed. About 4'3", 9", you know, he matches up with those wingbacks. In fact, he's the only player in the Miami offensive backfield that's faster than the three outside or the three linebackers that Miami has. So again, you see the overall team speed. Daryl Morrison made the stop for Arizona. They give on the left side, squirting loose now, is Larry Jones. He carries on. We'll see about a penalty. It's about the time you'd see somebody throw a face mask, but we'll see. As Jones is run down by Bobby Rowland. There's a guy, six feet, 200. You saw Morrison just bounce off of him. He had a free shot at him and just bounced. He's filling in uh, as a running back. He and Patton are backing up. McGuire, who's hurt, did not make the trip. But they go three or four deep. It really doesn't hurt a club like this. It's so well established in the last five years. What, they've won. They finished first, second, or third in the nation as far as rankings are concerned. Grabbing the face mask. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Enforced from the end of the run. First down, Miami. Well, let's take another look at the face mask. Here's Roland going to grab Larry Jones. No, we hold that truth to be self-evident. Well, he's so strong, and a guy like Roland, who's only, what, 5'11", about 186 pounds, trying to tackle that 250-pounder. It was a good romp for Jones. It was good for a first down anyway. Now Miami into Arizona territory on the 46-yard line. Jones again. This time they read him. Well, that's a little better matchup. Sean Harris is 49. He's just back in the Arizona lineup. They moved him from outside linebacker to inside to give them a little more muscle in that middle linebacking spot, and he comes through and makes a great tackle. You get a chance to see Rudy Barber and Leon Searcy come over and pull on this play. A little bit too tight to see them, but they were there. Harris was too. Great tackle. Redshirt freshman out of Tucson High School. Got hurt at the Ohio State game and hasn't played since then. Here's his first ball game. Second and ten with Pat in the backfield. Florida under a great deal of pressure throws a deep and wide and complete. And let's see, four six. There you go. And Lamar Thomas does not endear himself to anybody in the stadium unless they're wearing green and orange right now. 
Boy, that was a super, super throw. Toretta got hit, had to get it away quick, was moving backwards, and still got enough on that throw to get it 40 yards, and there was good coverage. Look at the pressure here. He's going backwards, throwing the ball with something on it. Talk about a big body and a strong arm. Well, he fits the Miami mold of quarterback. And big Biggs. coverage right on it. it. Had to be a perfect pass. Looks like he even had his hand on it. Another one of those great receivers. A great high jumper, and of course, he'll get it up any place he can get it. Well, for Toretta, that is his 13th TD toss this season. There's Ivis. I guess since these two schools are getting together for the first time, we might as well meet each other's mascots. Ibis, we are told. I'll underline that. Ibis is a legendary bird found in Egypt as well as the Florida area. And it's the last one into the shelter before the hurricane hits and the first one out. He doesn't want to be along with everybody else, I guess. No, he's so, he's so good at what they do. Now, Miami has a great baseball program. Well, no, that's the Mania. See, that's his cousin. It's the same right? guy, oh, different okay. costume. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, you know, they got the Ibis, they got the Maniac. The guy's name is John Routh. But he doesn't. You're right, the Maniac. I know where you're going with that one. Ron Frazier has that outstanding baseball program down there. He goes, we've seen him at the College World Series. Well, he, he goes to the World Series whether Miami goes or not. He's so good with those kids and uh, that program that they bring him in there. And he's even sought after, see? Like, <laughs> People want to talk to the Ibis. All right. After all that, it's 12 nil. And the Hurricanes want to put two up on the board early. And the Bluebirds are out. Speaking of mascots. Toretto may get it himself. It's a race, and he will not get in there. Richard Holt came up from his cornerback position to run him down. What a strange game <laughs> already. All right, Miami fails on the extra point attempt. We'll be back. Devon playing for Levy. Deep. Spins out maybe across the 20 to the 21 yard line. We'll see if they mark it. It looks like they're going to mark it down at the 21 yard line. So the Wildcats missing Chuck Levy amongst others tonight. So many Wildcats missing. Well, Vaughn's a great returner, but Levy, of course, ranks number four in the nation. And uh, returning has been one of the strengths that Arizona football team has been their kicking game. Both the return teams. And, uh, punts and kickoffs and also the punting team and the kickoff team. All right, the Wildcats with the first and 10. Actually, they mark it at the 22. We correct ourselves. 10-17 remain in the first half. Cricket. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Miami's changed their defense a little bit. They aren't sitting back in the gaps as much as they did earlier. They're coming with five and six and putting pressure on Arizona, making it tough on the running game. Darren Krein made the stop. You see Richard Holt there, 37. That's, please move over, young lady. There you go. Hang on a second. There she goes. Richard Holt there made the stop on the two-point conversion. It was Holt who was... Uh, left at the altar on that great reception by Lamar Thomas. So he got his back. They had a little exchange at Holt and Thomas after the touchdown reception. So a uh, good pop down there by Holt. You know, as you look at this half, Arizona's played very aggressively defense. It took a great play by Miami to score. That pass was perfectly thrown. It was thrown by Toretta when he was on his back, you know. Unbelievable throw and a great catch right on the money going full blast. Well, as if it's on cue, Prickett is now hurt. Now Arizona is into their third quarterback on the season. Billy Owens is the first baseman on the baseball team. Number 19, he's also the fourth team quarterback. He's a sophomore. Hits the daylights out of the baseball. He's got an outstanding arm, and now Owens is into the ball game. So this, for Arizona, they go to Malauulu, Levy, Prickett, and now Owens at quarterback. Wow. Now you got to be thinking about who follows Owens. I don't know if there's uh, uh, you better, you got anybody there. Left? Yeah, go up in the stands. 
Owens is probably the better passer of any of the quarterbacks there is on hand. Well, let's see. The Wildcats may have run out of time on the clock. We'll see. There's 9.16 remaining in the first half. Prickett has apparently injured his ball. wrist. Ball start. Offense. Still second down. Well, you figure it's going to be tough. Owens has not had an opportunity to take many snaps. So we saw him sparingly in the Long Beach State game. Dick Tomey has seen him play sparingly in the UCLA game. As a matter of fact, he threw a rifle shot. He was intercepted. Well, he got a lot of snaps during the week and as a number two quarterback. So he's had more and more turns, but now starting 15 yards to go for a first down and second down. Here's the ball to Carter. The Hurricanes read it. And the Wildcats are not going in the right direction as Bethel comes up to make the stop. Damon is 6'5", 248-pound sophomore. This might be the moment where Miami takes over. Well, this is what's happened to Arizona all year with the injuries. You don't get any continuity. You don't know who's doing what. Uh, different exchange man. And every week, they've had to go through a readjustment-type period. And here you are. You know, you got to throw the football down here. I don't know if you can try and run it. But they're getting into a situation where no gainers on the three downs they have. Well, anybody who can play on or can run on the track team is in the ball game now. As the Wildcats are going to try to make this a vertical pass here. <laughs> 817 remaining in the half. And they take too much time. So another five yards. Owens a second late getting the play called. And that just buries Arizona a little bit deeper. It's two in a row. They just gotta give him a little bit more help right now. They shouldn't know what play they got going right now without a huddle. They've not yet started the play clock. Dick Tomey has been having his constitution challenged all year. Matter of fact, in the start of training camp, people have been falling by the wayside left and right. Okay, try it again. Eight minutes remaining in the half. Owens sends it into the bench. Lockhart outstanding speed the intended receiver and Miami is going to get some great field position Adam Grant will come on to punt and Arizona's punting game so far has been a pretty basic strategy for ground uh, is grand rather is to kick it out of bounds and keep it out of the hands of him Kevin Williams well, let's cost him some yardage but even on the last punt 39 that's his average at 38 net wise he's averaging 35.4 for Arizona fifth in the nation or 45th in the nation fifth in the conference Williams as a punt returner. We talked about as a kickoff as a kickoff returner. He's already returned two for touchdowns this year, including a 91-yarder. Again, Arizona looks like maybe short on personnel. Tonight he lit up the University of Houston. You might recall that game. All right, Grand stands in his own end zone. Already a bad start to this play. Meanwhile. Williams is inside the 50. This one is going to come down to Williams at the 48. Here's the coverage. There's the picket line. What do you do? Unbelievable. This is a guy that ran 90 yards against Penn State. 63 against uh, Long Beach State. In fact, he ran two against Long Beach State, but stepped out of bounds on the one-yard line. Now he comes back the next week and runs another one. The number one punt returner in the country. So Williams returns his third punt for a touchdown. Meanwhile, Barry Julian, the Arizona Wildcat uh, tight end, lays at the 50-yard line. Julian was the number two tight end going into the season. It looks like it might be his knee. We've got a, a dead ball foul against the Wildcats. That'll probably come after the kickoff. That's a 15-yarder, probably personal foul, looks like. Well, it lasted for a quarter. Julian, meanwhile, is being escorted off the field. I'll tell you what, those are the most two overworked people in the United States as far as football goes. 
Sue Hillman, and Bruce Tolliver. 17 starters so far, and a host of others. And sometimes there just aren't enough guys out there to practice. Well, Kevin Williams, not only you know, all-purpose yardage, really the only yardage he gets is on receiving. He's not one of their better receivers. He's had a tough time breaking into the starting lineup with all the skills he's got. But he's still on all-purpose yards. He's 137. That's eighth in the nation. And all those come from punt returns and receiving passes. Carlos Huerta, who is on the Miami press guy. Unusual for a kicker. That's not unusual, though. He nails it through, and the Hurricanes are now out to a 19-mil lead. When searing exactly why Adam Grant was ex instructed to not kick the ball to Kevin Williams the first time he puts his mitts on it on a punt. A lot of good screen blocks on this, and here's his speed at 4.26 or 4.3. He's 5'9, but he's got 185 pounds on that frame. Tougher and nails. He was a linebacker in high school. That's the way he thought he ought to play is, uh, on the defense. Terry Vaughn with a little running room. Moves it out to the 30-yard line. Arizona takes over first down there, trailing 19-0. We were talking about it before the start of the ball game, how quick Miami can strike. They have posted 11 scoring drives of less than one minute, 16 of less than two minutes, and 23 less than three minutes of possession time. So these guys really don't take over possession. They just borrow it and give it back to you again. You know, it's an interesting thing, too. I think but Miami's averaging about 25 minutes of possession in each game as Billy Owens starts the series for the Wildcats by handing inside. Not much yardage there. Well, that's right. You defend possession time. You say, hey, Miami's having trouble. They can't hang out the football or keep it. Arizona needs possession time. Arizona's last in the Pac-10 as far as possession time. But in Miami's case, they strike so quick, it doesn't matter how much the opposition has the ball. They're going to come right back at you. So for most football teams, that stat staring you in the face would be a concern for a coach. But for the Miami Hurricanes, uh, it works the opposite way. So a lot of times, statistics can lie to you. And they score a lot of points. <laughs> 6.50 to remain in the half. Now a timeout called. By the, the Wildcats. quarterback, Arizona's just having a tough time getting plays in there, and I'm sure uh, Billy Owens hasn't had any play in time, maybe three or four plays up until this game. He got in some at UCLA. He got in some against uh, Long Beach State in that route. But right now, uh, they've got to cut their package down again. I'm not sure offensively they've got to figure out how much can Billy Owens handle. They've cut it down for Prickett. Now they have to cut it down again with Owens, who's not an option quarterback. He's probably the best passer of Arizona's four quarterbacks. But that restricts a little bit. What can they do with their offense? I'm sure some of the plays they don't, as they send them in, can he handle it or can't he? And that's a concern or a problem that the, the coaching staff has to deal with. We won't run down all the scores until a little bit later, but people in Florida will certainly be interested in this score. Florida State was favored by many points to beat Louisiana State tonight. They came back after LSU got off to a great start. Florida State 27, Louisiana State 16. So the Seminoles, who trailed by as many as 10 early on in the ball game, came back to win it. Well, Billy Prickett is back in the game, so whatever the injury was, they've taped it. And, uh, Arizona goes to the shotgun right here. Prickett, and of course the snap is low for him. And the ball is nearly picked off, as close as it can be with that actually occurring. Corwin Francis, the linebacker. Corwin, just a freshman. Might be had the wind knocked out of him. Prickett expecting the ball there. No, it's down low. As we indicated, Manny out the, the center is a true freshman. And they just put in the shotgun this week, so he hasn't had a lot of experience getting that ball back there. And against this kind of pressure, I'm sure it's got him thinking a little bit. To bring a third down and eight for Arizona. Quick kick. Prickett sends it down. Well, this means Kevin Williams won't get to return it. Not a bad job either. It's going to be placed down at the 16-yard line. Well, you got the right idea now. 
Well, is Arizona going into the football game felt they had to do something, throw the dice, take some chances. They went for fourth down and, uh, and lost. Now on a quick kick there, they put that in this week from their uh, shotgun formation. Vaughn's been kicking, Prickett's a kicker. McLaughlin kicked one from uh, field goal formation, so they've got a lot of kickers on this team, four to date. And they all have a pretty good average right now. <laughs> one thing you can say for the Wildcats and the coaching staff, through it all, it seems as if they're, they're, they're just hanging in there. First down, the pass across the middle, broken up by the Wildcats. Toretto ranging to his left, going after Joe Moore, but Richard Holt came up, delivered a shot that made the ball turn loose. Here's the big guy rolling. Very good fake here. Very good fake. Going against the green, a tough throw. Almost a great catch by Moore, who has 11 catches so far this year. One in this ball game. On second and 10 from the 16-yard line. Plenty of time again, and deep. And a little bit too tall for Lamar Thomas. Thomas has already has one touchdown reception tonight. He Bragg down the field with him. Arizona did this week in practice was get their fastest people, whether they were defensive players or what, and put them out on the, on the wings, on the flankers, and just run them vertical and try to cover them. They had Keyshawn Johnson, who's a defensive back, hold the defensive back. So you saw all kinds of people practice just running vertical routes and the Arizona linebackers and defensive backs trying to stay with them. But Arizona has pretty good team speed. You know, the team speed of Miami is one of the big pluses. But Arizona's not bad in that category. They have good team speed. On third down, Toretta to pass again. Across the middle, let's see if the ball was received. It was good catch by Coleman Bell. The junior picks up enough. Let's see if it's enough for the first down. They may measure this one. Tony Bowie, the free safety, makes the stop for Arizona. And they don't even need to measure. They say it's a first down. The offensive scheme of Miami, Dennis Erickson uh, headed at Wyoming, at Washington State. He's stayed with it, uh, probably uh, sophisticated it a little bit as he's moved along, but he's kept it. Basically, there's not a lot of plays you have to run. The big plus is you spread the field, you spread the defense. It makes your running game uh, go effectively as well. Well, they're going after the passing game now. Incomplete. Darrell Spencer was the intended receiver. Ty Parton was putting on the pressure for Arizona. Ty, a junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. When you spread the field that way, you know, your defensive people have to run a long ways on any kind of a play, whether it's a running play or a passing play. And Arizona's defensive unit, uh, with all the injuries, uh, that's not a bad first group out there, but uh, as the ball game goes along, that might be a factor, as uh, a couple defensive players have not dressed out for this particular game. A freshman, true freshman, Hoffman playing in there with Parton, a junior, probably their best down lineman. And then the other two down linemen are outside linebackers, really. Goes back as Patton goes in motion. Quick pitch outside to Williams. Well, they figured him out this time. And well, finally he goes down. Sean Johnson made the stop for the Wildcats. Now the coaches, particularly on the Miami sideline, are going to have to get their players' concentration back on the regular facets of the game. Looks like a personal foul has been called on this side of the field for the Miami players getting on the field. Personal foul on the offense. This is not the first time that an Erickson team has met a Tomey team. It happened when they were both Western Athletic Conference coaches, Erickson at Wyoming and Tomey at Hawaii. Dead ball, personal foul, offense. Play I like think this game is going to help Arizona when they do play Washington State because the defense, offensive scheme 
Here's a seam. All right, Keyshawn Johnson's number eight. We'll see. I'm not going down. I refuse to go down. I still refuse to go down, which is fine. I am going to make you go down. There we go. Well, Williams is strong. You know, he's 5'9", <laughs> but there's 185 pounds on that frame. And as we indicated in high school, he was a defensive bad linebacker. Question, why in the world would you take the helmet off? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's one of the best things you got going out there for a football fight. We were saying Washington State runs the same scheme now. But the assistant coach, uh, who was an assistant under Erickson, and to finish that point, obviously Erickson and Tommy locked horns several times in the Pac-10 as well. All right, 5-19 remain in the first half. Third and 21 for Miami after the penalty. So Arizona's got an idea what they can do out of this scheme, but still stopping it with the good athletes they have is another factor. That's one thing Miami does do. That is execute. Man-to-man -man coverage on the trips are coming after Trent. Trent throw and his pass is caught and dropped. Well, again, that tough single coverage by Holtz. Had him turned around. Joe Moore, the tight end, was Toretta's intended receiver. Richard Holt was involved in the play. Had to throw it in a hurry. Nice lob. Just set it up there gently. Well, both tight ends now have dropped one. Terry Vaughn stands at the 35 yard line. The Wildcats block it. It might be six. Boy, that's a tough, tough break. Make it a two. I was looking at Vaughn, to be honest, and not really noticing where Snyder was standing. Just didn't get it quick enough to get the six points for Arizona. The ball goes out of bounds. So it's a safety. If somebody grabs it, it's six points. That's the difference. Typical of the Arizona season, however. But that's the first block for Arizona. Arizona's had a reputation the last five years. They blocked an average of four kicks a year. And here's their first of this season. And that's been one of the reasons for the tough goal they've had. They haven't been able to get those big plays either on defense or offense. Just couldn't grab it. Did not have control. Well, that's a good call. And the referee right on top of it as well. But two big aggressive plays have helped Arizona, and uh, the intensity of the game, the level has increased. The great play by Keyson Johnson on that third down pass play to stir up a little bit of action, and then uh, they come right back and block the kick. That's the first kick that anybody's blocked against Miami this year. Miami has blocked one kick. Well, it's a tribute to Huerta. Ordinarily, after a safety, you'll see the punter come onto the field, but Huerta, who just rifles the ball down the field, will come on and kick from his own 20. This is actually a free kick, although he will place kick it out. That is their option. That is their decision. Arizona with five minutes to go. He should get pretty good field position. So far, he kicks it. Look at this. Vaughn back to his 10-yard line. My goodness. And he's got a hole. And it's Williams who runs him down. And guess who catches him? Yep. The fastest guy in the Miami team, Kevin Williams. He plays on the special teams. Receiver. Tough, tough player. And maybe anybody else but him, although they got a lot of speed, might not have caught Vaughn. Well, the Wildcats with their injuries have been a headache, but they certainly aren't a bore. A 36-yard kickoff return on the free kick. Cricket out of the shotgun on first down now. 4.52 remain in the half. And the shuttle is to Antoine Carter. Carter moves forward, maybe picking up three or four. Here comes a penalty flag. There's that shuffle play that Jack Curtis at Utah made famous years and years ago. It's a forward pass, so if you do fumble it or drop it, it's just an incomplete pass. So it's a very, very safe maneuver. Well, there you see the call from Gordon Reese, face mask against Miami. The Wildcats were marked down with a three-yard pickup, a five-yard penalty. Face mask, defense, five-yard penalty from the end of the run. 
Hill first down. It'll bring up first down for Arizona. They get the play over. They pick up the five yards on the penalty at the end of the at the end of the play. So it's actually first down and two for the Wildcats, which is important. It's an extra play. Good time to throw play. right now. They got some three downs here. High ball and the Canes come offside. We'll see who drew who. This is another weird game. All year long, Arizona games have been the most unconventional. There's a flag on the play. I think on that last play, you saw the great speed of the defensive secondary of Miami. Uh, Carter, Antoine Carter can run. And even though he got across the line of scrimmage, looked like he was open. The uh, outside linebacker and defensive back. Offside. Really converged in a hurry. Kevin Patrick, a sophomore, jumped at the top of your screen, the left end for Miami. And the Wildcats, with the aid of two consecutive Miami penalties, move ahead 13 yards on one play. And they have a first down and 10 now inside the 40-yard line. Ball spotted at the 38. Cricket from the eye bone. Gives to Carter. He's out of room in a hurry, but he bounces away. And maybe back to the line of scrimmage. And the Hurricanes upset with themselves because they, they had him for a loss. Well, they did. You saw his quickness and his agility and his toughness uh, in that particular run. Arizona still running the football now, but Miami loading up on that line of scrimmage with that great quickness. Well, you've had seen that's the first of a new series. Miami was penalized three out of four plays. 3.39 remaining in the half. Cricket. The follow-away intended for Vaughn. He didn't have any pressure. I don't think he really had to throw that quick. Maybe he felt somebody coming from that blind side. Or perhaps a very, very quick timing issue, but that's ordinarily not where you'd see that. But Miami had picked up the receivers in a hurry. 19 to 2. Even the score is unconventional. With 335. Our friends in Miami are watching Arizona play for the first time. They once won a game at Iowa's a 3 2 or 5 2. Well, it was in those kind of numbers. Yeah. It was a baseball score. Timeout, Arizona. Last timeout. Arizona has now exercised its option to call its last timeout, which they have done. So now it's 334 remaining in the half. Well, I'm sure they didn't want to use it, but uh, they've had two quarterbacks already in this particular half. and. Uh, to make sure now the yardage is tough to come by. They're uh, second and long right here. A chance with 334 uh, to possibly get some more points on the board. But tough to sustain anything against that good Miami defense. Brickett seems to be all right. He's come back in the ball game. Uh, indicated up here that it was a wrist. We haven't seen him throw. He threw awful quick on that last play. I don't believe the, the hand signals that we had... Uh that were conveyed to us that it was not his throwing hand, it was his left hand that had been injured, his left wrist. That's the exchange hand. Now we see some tape on the right wrist. Uh, you used to be able to put your plays on that tape, but they don't do that anymore, so you know that must be the wrist that he hurt. You see on his left wrist, that's a plastic container that has all the plays, numbered plays in there, has the numbers and also the play name. And so from the side, Arizona just puts in a number, and he goes and looks up that number on his wrist, and then he can tell what play it is. What formation? Red Ace, and they know where to go from there. Well, he's over the sideline talking to Mike Flores, who is working with him down there. Flores, a former UCLA quarterback. George Malulu, who was the Wildcats' starting quarterback when this season of tears began. Cricket has a bat it, and he's going to knock it down again. So the Hurricanes were swirling. Left end Kevin Patrick batted it the first time. Cricket had to finally break up the possible interception. That'll bring up fourth and ten for Arizona. I think that illustrates the tough to time that Cricket has. He's six feet, maybe. Here's his big lineman coming in. It's tough to throw dump passes over, over the middle to the side screens. You know, you need a nice tall quarterback like Toretta, 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", Maddox. Those kind of quarterbacks, if you're going to run a passing offense this much. Patrick ran the, the stunt play, got put the pressure on. Hamlet made the block. All right. 55-yard field goal attempt right now for Steve McLaughlin. And now Miami wants to call a timeout, so McLaughlin can think about it. So 
The Wildcats have used all of their timeouts. Now the Hurricanes have done as well with 3.28 remaining in the first half. Well, McLaughlin has a good leg. Now his long of the year is 27. He's only kicked two field goals, so that's another thing. As you look at Arizona, they have not had many scoring opportunities. They don't get the ball in the red zone very often during the year. And here you see 12 passes. Uh, Arizona rushed 61, 73 total yards. And Miami, 169 total yards, passing 134. But the rush, Arizona's done a good job against the Miami rush, and they felt they had to do that to give themselves any chance in the ball game. Maybe a trick play for Arizona. They've worked on some fake field goals, but with 328, I'm not sure. They might even quick kick from here. They did that once already this year. Just put Miami back in the hole and hope for some kind of a mistake. Well, with McLaughlin, a little touch of irony. McLaughlin's father played football at Montana State. And the quarterback on the team at Montana State, when Mr. McLaughlin was there, was a fellow by the name of Erickson. He was a good one, all conference for a couple of years. So he's got West uh, connections. Did a lot of assistance work. There it comes. Quick kick. A little pooch, and it's going to roll down to the five. McLaughlin now with a punting average. Oh, he's got, as he said, yeah, punting punting year, so, uh, He gets up there, Vaughn's got a kick, Cricket's got a kick. His average was 30. I suppose that's maybe a 20, 25-yard kick. So he's right on average, no return. The Rincon Mountains obscuring the moon's ascent. An idea. This stadium runs north-south, due north and south. The Hurricanes will be driving to the south now to the north end zone. A well, great defensive position for Arizona. If they could capitalize here, put some pressure, but Tourette is just as dangerous here as he is at the at this same yard line on the other end of the field. And they score from anywhere. The give is to L Larry Jones. Jones has been running all over the Wildcats tonight, knocked down by Mike Skurlock. Well, still a total yardage now. Uh, you know, tailbacks in the uh, Miami offense are really split receivers or flankers, and they change. They run in two new tailbacks each play. They bring the play in. We have only seen the one back. We have not seen the two back set. Patton very quick, single back back there now. Well, they try to go off the right side, not for much, if any at all. Jamal Lee was in on the stop. Jones again, the ball carrier. Fans out this area will remember Broussard, who was a great running back at Washington State when Erickson was there, and led the Pac-10 in rushing as a single back. Well, that's an effective offense, so whether you got two or one backs. Back Big third down play here for the Arizona Wildcats. the middle they find more and he's well over the artist needed for a first down oh, great call against the zone the zone drops back and here you see more more delays over here on the left we can't see him they hold him in there for blocking and then release him after the zone is dropped back about 10 or 12 yards and he's able to run three or four and no one near Toretta at all minute 47 remain in the half. And Toretta wants to go big time again. This is going to be 10 yards over Williams. You can only ask Kevin to run so fast. When Arizona only rushes for uh, Miami does a great job of picking them up and give Toretta plenty of time. Arizona's mixed their defenses pretty well in this first half. See if they stay with it now with second and long. Second and 10 on the 23-yard line. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass. A minute 38, neither team with a timeout remaining here in the half. Looks like a two-deep zone for Arizona. Coming with four. That's what it is. Toretta going after Lamar Thomas. It was off his hands. Jay Phillips... 
realizing after he made the hit that perhaps he could have picked the ball off the deflection. He was just watching the receiver and uh, Toretta threw between the two zones in the seam, as they call, and uh, really had a chance to complete it. The two deep were probably a little deep, but with a guy like Toretta, you probably can't get too deep. And that opens up the middle of that zone when you drop that much. All right, he'll try it again. Third down and 10. Same defense for Arizona, looks like. Was he in? And they say he was. An outstanding reception across the way by Copeland. Horace, a 6'3 junior. Went right. just as far as he needed to get the first down by a, what, a foot? Oh, look at that long stride. Long legs, great hands. Outstanding footwork as he picks up the first down for Miami. And a lot of great receivers, but they feel strongly that this guy is uh, a chance to be the best. He stayed high school, high, seven foot high jump. Got over 400 yards this season in catches, including tonight's. Four again. A little too tall for Joe Moore. A penalty flag down on the field about the time when quarterbacks fall down and get hit somebody after the play. It looked like Jamil Lee uh, couldn't hold up. That's a big completion, really 15 yards right there. Well, we'll get the call now from Gordon Reese. Roughing the passer, defense, automatic first down. Here's Lee, number 15, into your screen. Ball is away, and boom. Well, that was pretty close. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the taunting penalty on the guy who was <laughs> hit. 124 remain in the half. Miami out near the halfway line. Here we go, Toretto again. Lays it in there that time. You know, we've seen him throw bullets. Now he lays one into Daryl Spencer. Well, he's big. He's 6'3". He can throw over those onrushing linemen. Arizona has a couple of linemen, 6'2", 6'3". But that's the advantage of a quarterback like that. And he fits the mold of Kozar and Testaverde and those other co great quarterbacks that have come out of that Miami program. Good size, strong enough at 6'2", 215, 211. And as, as we've seen here, he can throw it deep. He can put something on the ball that passed for the touchdown. You know, it's an unbelievable pass. That'll make all the highlight films around the country. You take a look at Mario Cristobal, the strong tackle is down right now. There's the penalty yard that's racking up. So 80 yards of penalties between the two teams thus far tonight. So far, as Cristobal is escorted off the field, Toretta is 13 of 28 for 170 yards passing. He's used seven receivers. He's used 15 different ones during the year. That's the strength. They throw to everybody. You can't really bracket anybody. Or who are you going to double up on? It's just uh, you know, an impossible situation for the defense. Arizona would like to keep him out of here. No backs. Ghost. A little timing play intended for Joe Moore. Richard Holt with him step for step. That will stop the clock with a minute 11 remaining in the half. Yeah, that puts a lot of pressure on the Arizona cornerbacks uh, covering those receivers man for man. And they're hopeful that they can get enough pressure rushing eight men to make it hurry to throw. But we saw him throw one on his back for a touchdown earlier in the ball game. So he's handled different kinds of defenses. Patton is the lone setback behind Toretta. Out to the sideline, pass completed. Holt takes Copeland and moves him back off the reception line a little bit. Again, Arizona coming with a lot of pressure down here. Trying to get Toretta to throw quick. Well, the Hurricanes have to hurry up now. They have no timeouts. 46 seconds remain. They are certainly within Huerta's range already, but they're not looking for that. And with the need of the ground making the catch is Lamar Thomas. And that'll keep the clock going after they move the chains. They'll stop it long enough for him to get another play. And I'm sure 
sure the Hurricanes would love to put another seven on the board for home state before the half expires. Toretta is on the four. Going for everything, and it's just through the hands of Copeland. Boy, he throws the ball well. He did. Morrison was just too far away from that receiver. He, had, he was in line of the ball, so maybe Copeland's vision, as you see here, right through Morrison. He's wide open. Oh. Hands on it. Those guys usually catch those kind. We've seen that first touchdown catch. Similar kind of pass. Still 29 seconds to go. That is not a gimme reception, but at the same time, that is an absolute perfect toss for a tough catch. 29 seconds remain. Well, exactly what the Wildcats needed. Sean Harris came in, followed by others. Jimmy Hopkins was in there. That'll bring Huerta in immediately. The clock is running right now. Can they get it off in time? Four seconds remain. It'll count if it goes, and it is off to the left. And that's how the half expires. An unusual first half in an unlikely matchup. And our score at the half, the Miami Hurricanes 19, the Arizona Wildcats 2. All right, we'll be back. a big upset in the ACC. Clemson defeated North Carolina State 29-19. Back east. And we'll try to duck in some of the other scores. As we mentioned, Florida State defeated LSU 27-16 tonight. Tulsa over Memphis State 12-7. And I'll find that other score of interest as we look at about 3,000 college football games today. Texas Tech beat Rice 40 to 20. And Texas A&M defeated Houston 27-18. All right, we're ready to go in the second half. Finally, Miami won the toss, deferred, and now will receive the ball to start the second half. Ball comes down to Daryl Spencer. Somebody made a shirt string tackle. I believe it was Jay Phillips, or a shirt tail tackle, I should say. And we're underway again. Keyshawn Johnson down on the play. And so we start with a stoppage here in the second half. Well, that's Arizona's first kickoff. Kirchhoff didn't boot that ball real well or very deep. Miami gets a decent return over the 20 into the 25. So far in the ball game, uh, I don't know of any injuries that have knocked anybody out of the ball game. So hopefully for Arizona's case, Keyshawn Johnson, uh, you know, outstanding cornerback. Johnson who made the play, hanging on for dear life, and then he's met by a bunch of blue shirts. Could have been his own folks. That Hit him. It looks like he got kicked in the shin, and uh, hopefully that's all it is. Well, that's been the picture of the year, and you don't want you, you don't want to wear out that statement. However, it has become true. The trainers are on the field constantly this year. 17 starters out, some of them for the season, one of them for a career. And on would we play in the second half, 19-2 in favor of the Hurricanes. Gino Toretta. Gives to Patton. He's met soundly on first down. We'll see about the spot. Mike Skurlock, a freshman, came up to make the hit. Talking about all the freshmen, the Wildcats. But this year, how many freshmen they use now? Well, ten seven, true seven, freshmen seven. they have played. We compared that to Miami. Miami has one true freshman, Riley, who was a teammate of uh, Charlie Camp, who's the uh, linebacker for Arizona. That's right, down at Bishop Shaw High School. Probably one of the outstanding linemen in the country, and he's playing a little bit for Miami. On second down, give again. This time is inside to Larry Jones. 
Jones twists and turns ahead very close to the first down. Mike Skurlock again with the tackle. Jones has had an outstanding night tonight so Well, he far. has. Arizona really has handled Patton better than they have Jones. Jones is much like McGuire, the starting running back for the Miami Hurricanes, who's out of this ball game. McGuire is voted the top fullback in the nation. Preseason, all Big East. As you know, Miami is in the Big East Conference for the coming year. They pick an all-conference team, and they're basing their conference champion on how they're ranked in the national polls. They're not going to base it on how they play against other potential conference members, but Pittsburgh, Syracuse, Rutgers, West Virginia, Temple, and those schools. Uh, and Miami is ranked number one right now in the Big East Conference. They're leading it because of their national ranking of number two. You saw the measurement. You only have to have some of the molecules of the football over the line. First down for Toretta. The give is inside of Jones. Boy, does he accelerate well. He's picked up maybe eight yards. It'll bring up second down. Now Heath Bray is writhing in the, what was the Miami or what was the Arizona backfield, now Miami's backfield where they'll huddle. Here comes the trainer again. So Heath Bray started the year as a safety, played last year as a safety, and had to move up as an inside linebacker at 6'3", 209 pounds. And that'll tell you legions about a Pac-10 school with a 209-pound linebacker. Well, they moved to the outside linebacker this week, and uh, the coach has indicated he won't be back at inside linebacker anymore. So Coach Tomey's coming out. To, here's a guy that's tough, leads the team in tackles, or was tied with Bowie up for this ball game. Well, I hate to be the harbinger of bad news so many times. And we'll make this mention first, but Barry Julian, who is starting at tight end tonight, has torn an interior cruciate, will be gone for the season. What's new? Back to Arizona Stadium right after these messages. And falling down with the football, no fumble. Larry Jones slipped, knee went down, they whistled it dead. The fans were seeing the play with their hearts and thought it was a fumble. You know, I think earlier in the ball game, and then the fumble Arizona made that uh, Miami recovered was similar, the ball uh, contacted. So I think they have a reason to maybe feel the same kind of a fumble here. Questioning the consistency of the calls, perhaps. I'll well, repeat the message we had just a moment ago before we took the break about Arizona tonight. Let's see. Well, I think that's the result of all the injuries Arizona's had. You know, they had to call timeout to stop the clock because they didn't have enough people on the field. And now they had too many on the field, so they used the timeout. All right, to repeat the bad news, Barry Julian was playing for Richard Griffith. Richard Griffith will have his knee cut on Wednesday. He's one of thousands of Arizona players who are wearing a pair of jeans in their jersey tonight. Julian plays in back of Griffith, and now Julian is out for the year. Torn, Terrier, Cruchette on the right knee. Make it 18 starters down this season. We are told now that Mike Bundy, a tackle, now puts on another jersey. Mike Bundy started in number 62 tonight, but this is typical of Arizona. Now he wears number 84 because now this second team right tackle is the fourth team tied in. Go figure that. By the way, in case you're wondering, he's a six foot six, 287 pound tight end, so you better stay out of his way. Well, they can play Roderick Lewis over there too. He's played some tight end. He's played some defensive back. He was in earlier in the half uh, for Julian when he first got bunged up. Wild year for the Wildcats. And I'm sure the Wildcats will be delighted to take the October month off their calendar and throw it in the wastebasket. Wrong year to have the schedule that they had in the month of October. All right. Brother delivers on the strike to Horace Copeland who was brought to the turf but right immediately after he gets the first down, Daryl Morrison and Bobby Rowland make the stop. So first down on a simple out. Pretty good cushion by Morrison. He was dropping to pick up the inside receiver to protect 
Copeland recognized the defense and pulled up, got the quick out. Hurricanes, he trips to the far side, give it to Jones. Jones battles, stays on his feet, stays on his feet, finally brought down. Larry Jones. Having a great night tonight at Arizona Stadium. Now there's Kozar for Arizona. Kevin Kozar, number 51. Sophomore, walk on from Wyoming. In at linebacker, has not played a lot. Good, tough player, just not experienced. Second and seven. Jones, the lone setback. Stays in the block. Fire out to Daryl Spencer. Coach, as you, as you said many times, I school I can roll and make the play. Spencer is listed as a tailback, and this is just another illustration. Spencer's the tailback. He's out on the line, spread out. And that Erickson offense with so many receivers available at all times can really wear down some defensive backs. Arizona playing zone pretty much so far. Now in this particular area, we might see some more pressure and uh, a little more man-to-man. Clock running, 11.36 remain in the third quarter. Toretta giving to Jones, he falls down. And the way things have been going for the Wildcats tonight, that's a break, because Jones has been picking up yardage at will. Jimmy Hopkins was there, we'll get credit for the tackle. Here's that single back offense, and here's one good sized back. Deep handoff, and he kind of picks any hole he wants up there. It's been very effective so far in this second half, although Arizona had limited the Hurricanes to 17 yards rushing in the first half. So Jimmy Hopkins there. He gives up about 30 pounds to Mario Cristobal. It was a good job by Hopkins to stand up the blocker there. Excellent job, as a matter of fact. Pressure by Arizona. Second 11, the ball was there. Was it caught? It was. The recipient was Lamar Thomas. It'll bring up a third down and five for the Hurricanes. Well, you're all alone out there, one-on-one, -on -one with a very, very quick sprinter-type receiver. But you have to throw the pass quick, and, of course, the defender can stay pretty close to them, and Arizona's been successful with that pressure every once in a while. That's about what he averages a game, 35 passes, 210 yards. They've been throwing about 300 and uh, 287 yards a game, 11th in the nation. Well, he's been averaging about 55% of his throws. That one hit the tail end of Williams, I believe. Darrell Spencer was the intended receiver. And we will see Mr. Huerta. So Carlos Huerta. We mentioned at the top of the program, holds the NCAA record for consecutive point after touchdowns. In fact, he holds 12 career records at Miami. I think there's only one left on the break. Well, he punches that one wide. I'm guessing Arizona was offside. That's probably going to give him a first down, maybe. That'll take, Fuert take care of Fuerte's miss, too. It was fourth and five. It'll depend on the spot. Of course, that'll move the ball down to about the 22-yard line. So even if it is fourth and inches, you would figure that Erickson's crowd would go for the first down. We'll see. Six men on the line on the offense. Offside on the defense. Penalties offset. Replay fourth down. We're still going to get another chance either way. Do it again. Well, for Huerta now, that becomes important for him. He missed a field goal tonight. That was his third miss of the year. I beg your pardon. That was his second miss of the year. This would have been his third. Yep. He's going to get another chance. Don't give him another chance. They do. He does. And the Miami Hurricanes go in front of the Arizona Wildcats by a count of 22 to 2. Three field goals by Carlos Huerta tonight. He's the leading scorer for the Canes. No matter. Ice pack continues at Arizona Stadium. That's Heath Bray, the former free safety. Now 
linebacker, now injured player for Arizona. He's out. Berkta, meanwhile, who just knocked his third field goal of the year through for the second time tonight, will be called for illegal procedure as he sends the kickoff out of bounds at about the eight-yard line. Arizona, the last time this occurred, elected to take the ball to 35, and it appears they'll do that again. Makes it real easy for special teams when you kick it out of bounds. It does. You know, Arizona... Let's take a look at this Miami scoring drive. 11 plays, traveling 46 yards. Five minutes, that's a long time for them. That's an eternity for Miami to take the score. You're right, they really haven't had a chance to get any big plays. That one big pass play, as far as running plays, Arizona's done a pretty good job. But Arizona, on the other hand, very difficult time moving the football. Miami still has not given up a rushing touchdown this football season. Okay, the Wildcats come out in the eye. Give us to Carter. He's met by a wall of orange and white. Maybe losing a yard. It'll bring it a second down for Arizona. Well, that's what they, the way they came out to start the ball game. And of course, Arizona has not run much from the eye. They've been an option team up until these last couple of ball games. But Miami's adjusted well to that, and they're putting four, and they're rushing five and six. So they're really not concerned about Arizona passing. Out. Arizona two for nine passing, one interception. Well, I tell you, give you an idea how the Wildcats came out against Miami tonight, and how they have the how they the Hurricanes have adjusted after the play. The delay. Moving forward for the Wildcats. A lot love it. First time he's carried the ball tonight. Antoine Carter tonight. Antoine Carter. On his first three carries at 30 yards, and his last 10 carries, he's had four yards. Well, Arizona only had 12 yards rushing in that second quarter. Here's five for them right here. Miami gives up 105 yards a game rushing. Passing down for Arizona. Third and five, Billy Prickett, the senior, with his second start ever. Gives out to the right. That goes nowhere. Grand will soon be on the field for the Wildcats. Rusty Medeiros and Darren Smith combined to make the stop. Billy Prickett on the handoff. You talk about speed. There was ample time to see where that football was going, Coach. Well, that's a Miami play, and that's the Washington State play, where they just set it back there, and he takes it, looking for a hole. But Arizona, again, you can see not much confidence in their passing game. Almost relying on the run against this Miami defense. Almost an impossibility for him. Adam Grand will get this one away from about the 30-yard line. Sends it down to Kevin Williams near the sideline. And Williams is brought down on the cross-field punt inside the 30-yard line. So after returning one for a touchdown earlier, Williams is contained inside the 30-yard line. The attendance tonight, 53,349, largest crowd of the season. You're going to see the Miami Hurricanes, also the traditional family weekend here. It used to be called Parents' Day years ago. Now they have to call it Family Weekend. So a big house watching an exceptional football team and the hometown team just quite frankly outmanned right now. Playing well on defense so far. Uh, tough burden to carry. On the first down. They're going to air it out, and it's caught. Did he hang on? Of course he did. Williams with an outstanding reception. And Toretta delivers right on the money. Keyshawn Johnson was along with him. Big pickup for Miami. That'll be a first down inside the 35-yard line. Another look at it. A good setup, first down play, and just vertical right between the zones. Keyshawn gets caught with two men in that area, has to make a choice. Williams, unbelievable speed, great throw, and a great catch. Outstanding at both ends. 7.25 remain, with lots of room as Toretta. Nope discretion the better part of Valerie saw that first down mark and said no I don't want 
Keyshawn Johnson to give me a whack, so he goes out of bounds about two or three yards short of the first down. Well, Spurlock, inside linebacker for Arizona, had a great shot at him and just ran right by him. He just went too quick. Not under control and couldn't make the tackle. Another big play for Miami. 19 for 37. Arizona's two for nine in the passing department. Well, Miami's been in the red zone just one time tonight. They've been inside Arizona's 20 just once, so they're knocking on the door again. On the 26, here's Johnson. Look at Williams. The only time he carries the ball is on those reverses, and that's the first reverse we've seen tonight. Arizona's put that into their offensive package. Uh, we haven't seen it run. I think the penetration of Miami is just uh, too much to make it effective. And there, Skirlock again misses a tackle. They had a chance to make a big play. Uh, one of the dynamic dynamics and we've seen this as a pattern before. You've got a lot of freshmen, true freshmen, playing all game long without a rest. And around the middle of the third quarter, into the fourth quarter, you see the missed tackles. They are simply out of energy. Well, one possession, three downs and out. The burden on the defense is just too much. And Martin Patton too much to cover. Right out of the backfield untouched into the end zone and the Hurricanes out to a 28-2 lead now. Larry McDuff, the defensive coordinator who usually spends his time in the press box now on the field along with Dick Tomey. Huerta does what he always does. And now the Hurricanes lead by a score of 29 to 2. Well, it was a much more interesting first half into the second half. 29 to 2 in favor of the Hurricanes. Meet Martin Patton. He just scored a touchdown for the University of Miami. Patton, a sophomore. And the gentleman to his right, Gino Toretta, threw it to him. Enjoying their evening in the desert. As the kickoff from Huerta is allowed to dribble through the end zone. Well, since Toretta and Patton have become such close friends, let's watch them in action. Patton running back out of the backfield in the delay. The zone drop back and filled the gap. And with his good speed, you just can't catch him. That's more of a typical Miami scoring drive, 58 seconds. You're right. How many 11 times they've scored under a minute? In the scoring drive? 12 now. <laughs> 12 times this season they've done that. Arizona, one possession in this half, three downs and out. Making a good point a moment ago, Coach, that Arizona came out in that first quarter with every gadget that they could achieve in the first period. As the throw is completed outside, good catch at the other end by Terry Vaughn. So Prickett goes to Vaughn. But after the initial success of those things, Miami makes the adjustments. They got great personnel. That pretty well shuts it down, although this is a good pass play from Prickett. All right, great catch over here by Vaughn. Third completion of the night, three for 10. First pass in the second half. Charles Farms on the coverage there. Well, Miami's lost one of their cornerbacks. He's been hurt, and Farms has moved over to take that spot. He's been the number two. Uh, strong safety. Strong safety, right. But uh, again, good safety. Second and two. The give is to Carter. It depends on the mark. I think they're going to stop him about an inch or two short of the first down. Jesse Armstead, one of the few linebackers in all of football to wear the number one, makes the stop. Well, those three uh, linebackers, two outside linebackers and that middle linebacker, you know, a lot of people feel they're the best in the country, the best set linebacker. Excellent quickness, strength, just tough, tough, tough to handle. Big down here for Arizona. They squirt Cricket through for the first down. Armstead again with the stop for Miami. And Arizona picks up a first down, and the Arizona defense breathes a sigh of relief. A little possession time. That's their first first down of the second half. That's not bad yardage on a little sneak right there. 
I'm sure coaches are going to ask the Arizona coach, well, who's got the best defense, Washington or uh, or Miami? Miami's defense uh, a little more basic. They don't have to do much blitzing or changing because of their strength. It's Washington's defense is an entirely different kind of a defense. It'd be a great match. On the draw, they give the ball to Gilbert. Gilbert doesn't really go anywhere. And you bring up that point, and again, you really can't come up with a coherent or cogent argument for instituting what would be a, a basketball-style tournament at the end of the season. When, you know, the, the, bat, the football championship would take place in March. But at the same time, would it be great to see what might be an 11-0 Miami team take on what might be an 11-0 Washington team? Possible. So far, it's possible. Washington wins today. And we... Yeah, but they can't play each other, though. No, nope, that's right. Hi, Prickett. Gets Lovett. And he has a first down. Two consecutive first downs for Arizona. Boy, Lovett's been a long time catching passes. He's had seven. But he hasn't had one for at least three weeks. Arrow Williams makes the stop for the Hurricanes. Well, you take a look at this Band-Aid group out there on the field for Arizona right now. A lot of freshmen, a lot of true freshmen, hurt people. A quarterback making a second start. A senior who's was pressed into service only a week ago at the Rose Bowl. They give to Gilbert again. Gilbert's got some room. And a first down. And he's down inside the 25-yard line. Who are these people? Well, Craig Gilbert, he had a great run, you know, earlier in the year of 39 yards for a touchdown in the Stanford game. Well, again, now Arizona's coming close to getting that 100-yard uh, rushing mark. And Miami doesn't give up a lot of yards. A little counter as they run that single back offense. Uh, a scheme or a play from the Washington State playbook. It was Derek Golden, the senior linebacker, number 80, who ran him down from behind. That's fitting. Gilbert has 50 yards on the night, six carries. He's the lone setback. Cricket the throw on first down. And to keep on first down. And Cricket close to a first down. Here's a flag. And it's in the vicinity where defensive players get in trouble. It would be great for the Arizona program uh, for the rest of the year if they could score a rushing touchdown here on, on Miami. Nobody has done that this year. That would boost their morale. And this has been a great series. They've thrown the football. That was a good selection there. They had the Miami defense going against the green and Pickett had a chance to throw it or run it. They started on their own 20-yard line after the kickoff went through the end zone. Here's Prickett. Might throw. Nope. Going to keep it. And he spins away from a couple of tackles. And again, as we've gone through the ball game, Arizona's an option team, and we have not seen the option once tonight. Dead ball, personal foul, defense. Penalized, half the distance to the goal line, first down. Well, the Hurricanes have just been assessed another penalty. During the explanation by Gordon Reese of the first penalty, a personal foul, one of the Hurricanes said something. The linesman tossed up a handkerchief, so that'll cost him another distance, half of which to the goal, half to the goal. You know, Miami's had uh, a lot of flack thrown at their program for the year, and especially after that Cotton Bowl win last year against Texas. Uh, but they feel strongly that they've corrected uh, a lot of those difficulties they've had. Excellent football field. They uh, like to demonstrate a little bit. Arizona has, a Arizona has a first and goal now at the three and a half yard line. 436 remain in the third quarter. Arizona comes out in their traditional eye bone. Cricket at quarterback. They give to Gilbert. Inside, Gilbert picks up one, maybe two yards before he stopped just shy of the goal line. And that whole front line, Patrick, Hamlet, Miller, and Medeiros were on hand to stop it. Now, Arizona's two tight ends. That looks like Bundy down at 84. I'm interested to see who the other tight end is. It's probably Roderick Lewis. It could be uh, Fina, who's a tackle. He's worked some at center this week. 
And so he's ready to go there because they've lost their starting center. He could be that other tight end in this goal line offense. Broadcast two yards short of the touchdown. That went nowhere. Medeiros and Armstead with the stop. And once again, it was Craig Gilbert who had his number called. That'll bring up a third down and goal for the Wildcats, still at the two-yard line. Mark Lunsford, who quarterbacked at Arizona in the red shirt, sending in some sentiment, if not the play. High bone again for Arizona. Love it. Charles Farms made the stop. And there's no way the Wildcats go after a field goal at this point. They've come too far right now. Well, that's a tough, tough two yards. I don't know if they could run the football at Miami uh, between the tackles. No one else has been doing it. <laughs> Nobody else has. You're right. Everybody else is helping. Only one of the timeout. Where they go instead? Inside. Here's Gilbert. Gilbert, a forward. And do they get it? Yep. Well, I, I'm sure Miami was aware they had not given up the rushing touchdown. Well, that was kind of a good matchup right down there. Arizona striving to do something nobody else has been able to do. Help them in the future with the five, four ball games they got left coming up. This might help their offense get on track a little bit. What was most interesting about it, or amongst the elements that were most interesting, the head coach wanted a timeout. They didn't do it. We just mentioned the fact that nobody runs between the tackles. They did it. Well, that was close to outside. That was really outside that uh, corner. Oh, no. But inside the end. Well, in most circles, coming from behind and making a 29-9 score might not be such a big deal, but for the Wildcats right now, it is a big deal. One more look. And that's great for Craig Gilbert, a senior, 234 pounds. He's really had a good ball game. Probably Arizona's best running back as far as yardage accumulation in this ball game. But they run that football in, and I think the other impressive thing was the drive. They took the kick, started on their own 20, and incorporated some passing with the running, and looked like a good football team going down the field. Well, the Wildcats travel 80 yards that time. Gilbert gets credit for a two-yard run. Two minutes and 26 seconds remain in the third quarter. One more look at Gilbert coming off the tackle here. And it looks like he just does break the plane. Billy Prickett was convinced anyway. And our score now, 29-9, a 20-point Miami lead. And when you consider what Arizona has gone through over the past two ball games in this month of October, on the road at Washington, giving up 54 points, on the road at Pasadena, giving up 54 points for the UCLA Bruins. Now, both those teams are excellent defensive teams. They just physically dominated Arizona. Arizona's responded much better in this football game. Scored nine points. Miami's been only given up 7.7 .7 a game. They've given up four touchdown passes and no rushing touchdowns, but they have tonight. Jay Kirkhoff puts it in the arms of Kevin Williams, and here he goes. Brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. And Williams is stopped. Here you see the scoring drive, 11 plays, 80 yards. The Wildcats took four minutes and 18 seconds. Very good news for the defense. Well, 80 yards uh, last week against Long, Long Beach got 86 total yards against this Miami defense. And Arizona gets 80 yards on that series. So that was a great, great series. Probably the best offensive uh, drive for Arizona in the last maybe three ball games. Scored a big touchdown against UCLA on a 51 yard run. But these were all shorter yardage attempts. Give. Off 
tackle, stop made by Jimmy Hopkins. The ball carrier was Martin Patton. Well, both teams have run the football a little bit better in this third quarter. Chris here is on that last drive. But, uh, Miami on their last touchdown moved the football on the ground and had Arizona looking for that run, and that made that pass that much better. Second and three for the Hurricanes. At their own 34-yard line. Clock ticking. Minute 44 remain in the third quarter. Game is off tackle. Here's Patton again. Out across the 50-yard line. Jay Phillips in on the stop. And the Hurricanes marching again. What makes that set so tough, there's no tight end, so there's five offensive linemen down there, and Arizona's got four on defense. So they have that advantage, and they're covering those wide receivers on each side, so it really opens up the middle of that defense. If you get by those four with your five, you have an advantage. You're going to get some yardage, and that's what Washington, I mean, Washington State, I mean, Miami has done in the second half. Hey, slipped there. Look, Erickson's old score. Here is again the deep pattern dropped this time by Lamar Thomas. And Toretta once again was right on the money. And that's three passes at least. He caught one for a touchdown uh, earlier, but right on the fingertips. You got to admire the touch that this big guy has. He's really throwing the football exceptionally well. Completing 55% of his passes. He's well over that in this ball game. But those vertical routes really make it tough on the defense. They're coming at you about, uh, you know, one out of every three or four plays. You know your defensive backs are going to be challenged. Second and 10 at the 50. Tripped up in the backfield is Larry Jones. Might have got back to the line of scrimmage. This is not the first time that this team, of course, has played in this state. It has not been a pleasant place for Miami. They've never played ASU or the U of A. However, the Hurricanes have played twice in the Fiesta Bowl, and they lost both times. So the Hurricanes are looking for their first win in this state. In 87, of course, they lost that great win to Penn State 14-10. Great in as much as it was for the national championship. In 85, they lost to UCLA. Holt comes up to knock that one down out in front of Copeland. Good thing the ball was thrown lower. Holt had a great chance to intercept it. Arizona really needs to come up with an interception. Some big play. They haven't got one yet, and all the passes that have been thrown in this ball game, you have to admire it. the big Miami quarterback. He's kept it out of the defensive hands. He has great vision. Terry Vaughn by himself. An outstanding punt. See where well, it bounces in. Looking to get that the nose down and have it bounce back instead. Paul Snyder puts it in the end zone. However, there is a penalty on the play. Keyshawn Johnson is indicating, although it doesn't count that it's against Miami. Now it's a personal foul against Arizona. Now, what's key is whether or not. Let's see. So far. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Oh. Oh. Why in the world do you do that? It cost Arizona a field goal earlier in the ball game. Uh, well, Keyshawn, a foul, junior college transfer from Fresno City College, getting a chance to play in the big time now. Personal foul, defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. He will be reminded of this for many days to come. Yeah, the play was uh, well done. Over, well over. Particularly disheartening for the defense that's not even on the field right now. And Arizona's going to have to call a timeout. And now Heath Bray, you saw, who was with a ton of ice over his body a few minutes ago, wants to go back in. what type of injury we have not heard what type of injury he had either it was just bruised or winded or once again sue hillman 
Someone with whom he's become quite well acquainted this year. What cost Arizona some points the last time they were penalized uh, on a fourth down situation. Now they're giving a good Miami team another chance to put some points on the board. By their 22 seconds remaining, as you see in the third quarter, 29-9 is our score. The Wildcats with one timeout left in the football game. And Keishan Johnson with a dead ball foul. That has cost Arizona's defense a good stop. Instead, it'll be first down for the Hurricanes on the 35-yard line. They try to run Patton outside. Ty Parton comes up from his tackle spot, went well down the line with him, and made the play. Miami usually doesn't run wide uh, unless they run a reverse. Usually that uh, one set running back is between the tackles and up the middle on delays and deep handoffs. That time he just scooted along the line of scrimmage looking for an opening. Holding against the Hurricanes. That'll back them up just a little bit. You know, it's interesting. We, we mentioned at the top of the show, and of course with Dennis Erickson there, are figures that what I'm about to say will continue. When you think of certain college teams you think of certain positions for instance at usc it's the tailback position and of course holding offense still first down we look at more work done on the sideline when you think of miami football you will long remember the great quarterbacks and it appears that gino toretta is right on target with the rest of them he's big strong he's a very good passer 116 yards of penalties so far tonight between the two teams. Go back to George Myra, Jim Kelly now at the Buffalo Bills, Bernie Kosar at Cleveland, Vinny Testaverde, Tampa Bay, Steve Walsh down at New Orleans, and on and on it goes. And on he goes. Deep again goes Toretta, and deep out of bounds he goes. Gino's looking for Daryl Spencer down there. Well, you know, some passing teams, and we talk about passing teams in the Pac-10, like Stanford and Cal are short passing teams. They go for those five and six yarders and, and kind of pick it to death. But here's a team that mixes it up, and that, just, I feel, makes them so great. All right, we got a timeout. No, we've got an end of a quarter. Same thing. We played three in Tucson. We'll have the fourth one coming up for you right after this timeout. At Arizona Stadium in Tucson. Dave sitting along with Bruce Larson. The Miami Hurricanes trying to make it 7-0 and on the season. Arizona came into the ball game at 2-4. And, and the Wildcats are anxious to be finished with the month of October. Washington on the road, UCLA on the road, and Miami at home. The Hurricanes start the quarter, second down and 20. After the penalty on the hold, through the hands of Heath Gray, and perhaps that ice or the injury that was treated with ice had something to do with the fact he couldn't hold on. Toretta once again firing right down the middle. Of all the passes he's thrown, you know, over 40 passes, that was the, really the only pass that had, Arizona had a chance to intercept. And they weren't able to come up with a play. Let's take a look at the score by quarters tonight. Miami ordinarily scores 48 points in the first quarter. I beg your pardon, they've scored 48 points in the first quarter this year. They've scored 88 in the second and 45 in the third. So Coretta across the middle, right on the numbers to his tight end, Joe Moore. And what will be read about this game tomorrow is that once again, all of the Miami receivers have been catching footballs tonight. Well, they've shredded around. I think we had seven at halftime. I, I don't know if they've increased that total. Moore, Thomas, Probably Spencer, the same. Patton, Copeland. All right, on fourth down, Mr. Huerta's on again. He's kicked three field goals tonight. This is a 51-yarder. He's got plenty of leg, and he hits the posts. 
Well, his career long is 52. And he had a chance to make that one. Uh, he's going to get slapped in the head a bunch of times. You certainly can't fault a kicker for that. 51 yards and he hits the iron. You were comparing programs and we were talking about you were talking about the great quarterbacks out of Miami. Uh, presently, they have 42 players on NFL rosters. So that ranks up there with USC, one or two in the nation. Arizona, I think, maybe has five or six. So you can see the difference in the, in the caliber of players in the program and the depth of the program. I'll have it checked just to make sure I'm not making up things. There, yeah, that's not a bench anymore. That's the infirmary down there. Antoine Carter gets back to the line of scrimmage as we resume. I was going to make the point, Coach, in support of what you're saying. I think of that 87 team that lost to Penn State. I think 26 of them. Well, of the two teams, I think, uh, there was a total of Yeah, out of that ball game went on to the National Football League. Armstead and Farrow were in on that stop. Most of the, the players come from Florida. 58 in this squad. Yep. Seven from Pennsylvania and then about seven from Texas. So. That, that's an interesting national phenomenon, too. Cricket looking for somebody to throw to. Goes outside and gets James Bullock. And they ruin this interception or what? He just took the ball away from him. Yep. A steal for Smith. That's... Well, we'll check it out right now. All right, there's Bullock. They want a touchdown because the ball really was never on the ground. Bullock I think he catches just took it out of his hand. Well, he'd be down right there. So even if he did steal it, the call was correct that he was down. I think the Wildcats might have a good point in saying was he down when the ball was stolen. However, Darren Smith does come up with the football for the Hurricanes. One more look. All right. Live, live, live. The hit. Now it looks like he did it just about right. Back to live action. The Wildcats read the run, and they pounce on Larry Jones. So it'll be a three to four yard loss for Miami. Again, I think the Arizona coaches are going to be pleased with the aggressive line play of Arizona. They've been physically dominated in the Washington and UCLA games, and uh, now they come back and, and pretty well. The line of scrimmage has been uh, a good battle. They haven't been dominated on defense or offense. in motion. Sort of all by himself in the backfield now. Now he goes to Williams. He's met at the original line of scrimmage. Daryl Morrison lays on the hit. Watch Here's Sherrod again. Again, an automatic blitz. He's come back pretty strong. Now, Heath's a hitter. That's the reason he's in the lineup. They've got to find some place to play, and that's why they play in so many different positions. Now he's back at strong safety in this series, or this set. Playing for uh, Bowie. 12 minutes remain in the game. Third and nine. Toretta. Two deep zone for Arizona underneath. Dumps it to Coleman Bell, who takes everybody down inside the 10-yard line. So jump on board Coleman Bell for a ride. Wheelchairs and more on the Arizona sideline. Tony Bowie finally rode Bell out of bounds. It'll be a first and goal for Miami now down at the seven yard line. And once again, Toretta, nice. Sharp release looked like a catcher that time, right off the ear. It was in the Arizona zone, dropping and dropping the, because of those vertical roots, and then uh, running that, sliding that tight end underneath has been very good for Miami. Hey, Charge, I, I mentioned uh, a catcher, short release like a catcher. Well, I should bring everybody up to speed on the baseball game in case you've been in a cavern somewhere. Kirby Puckett broke up the World Series tonight, game six with a home run in the 11th inning, and they're going to go seven. Just a great, great series. A identical series to 1987. You know, people listening to this ball game down in Miami, Mario Cristobal down the second time tonight. So we hope he's all right. 
but Miami has an outstanding baseball program under Ron Frazier, so they might be interested in this. In the last two times, Minnesota's been tied up in that World Series. Matter of fact, Arizona's personnel in the baseball program have had a hand in it. Back in 65, Jerry Kindall was an infielder for the Twins. In 87, when the Twins won the seventh game, former Wildcat Joe McGrain for the St. Louis Cardinals made the start. And tonight, Scott Erickson, a former Wildcat, made the start for the Twins, who were victorious. Three to two, and they go seven. They'll go one more tomorrow night. Crystal Ball will go more sometime soon. As I mentioned, it was the second time tonight he's been shaken up. Ron Frazier in the Miami baseball program. That's an outstanding well, operation. All, right. You've just talked about is one of those 12 outstanding juniors that Miami has. And some people feel that all 12 of those uh, people are possible National Football League uh, players. But they've rotated their offensive line. They've been rotating their defensive line pretty much. So they have great depth on both sides of the football. in the football game. Second and goal from the three. Timing pattern and the flag is down. If it's against Arizona, it'll be first down on the one. And it's a matter of waiting to find out exactly the referee's interpretation. Daryl Morrison was the Wildcat involved. It was a great touch pass, and again, when Arizona or Miami has gone to that no back offense or ghost, as uh, Arizona players refer to it, uh, they have a special defense called for it. Pass interference, defense in the end zone. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First and ten. First and goal. All right, first and goal at the two for the Hurricanes, as if they needed additional opportunity well thrown again I think so almost makes a good catch again good hands There's two backs in the backfield on this play it's squirting right through for the touchdown is Larry Jones and this touchdown came as a result of a penalty on a punt Interception or the steal. The steal. I, I, I beg your pardon. Vaughn. Yeah, came I, after the punt. I went. I got behind there. So there was an exchange. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> no apology here, though. Huerta converts. 36 points on the board for the Hurricanes. Nine for Arizona. And that's where the. That's where we are right now. 10:57 remain in the game. <laughs> front of the Wildcats and now as Miami gets into that upper reaches of the scoreboard you wonder what they might do in the next 10 minutes or so kickoff from Huerta down to Vaughn Vaughn picks it up out to the 20 yard line and a little bit beyond that out to around the 24 yard line before he's upended finally talking about Florida, the emergence of three outstanding programs in football in Florida. Florida State, Florida, Miami. Sc scoring drive, five plays, 30 yards, a little bit longer now, two minutes and 14 seconds after the steal. And the right in their scoring average at 36, they're averaging 37.7 oh, points a game. And Arizona has been averaging 20 points a game. They were a while below that with nine, but had an impressive drive last series of it. Cricket from the shotgun on first down, airs it out to Bullock, and he is hit. And the absence of a flag brings the wrath of those still here. Good throw by Cricket. Yeah, well thrown ball by Billy Cricket. Got plenty of time out of the shotgun. And 
both up in the air going for the ball, although the defender was behind him. Really doesn't matter what we think. <laughs> Trips to the near sideline. A lot of track speed out there now. They go back inside. This is Carter. And Antoine breaks loose. He's got some space now. He's got some wheels, too. Carter fighting his way and fighting his way down inside the 15-yard line. Here comes a flag. Probably a face mask in there. Great, great run. And again, you see the speed of the Miami secondary that saves another rushing touchdown. Ryan McNeil was the hurricane who flew down the field to get Carter. A preliminary indication, as you thought, Coach, would be a face mask against the hurricane. It's a 63-yard run by Carter. Great counter. Arizona lined up in a, in a Miami set with three trips to the left and ran a counter back to the right to the short side. And McNeil, who has 4-4 four, four speed, another one of those quick defensive backs for Miami. Well, now it's against Arizona. First of all, driving the face mask, offense. Three nice 15 yards from the spot. First and 10, Arizona. There's a face mask call against the Wildcats, so let's see if we can pick it up anywhere. Okay, there's Carter. Right there, he must have grabbed his face mask right there. We can't see it from this cut. The bizarre, the unusual is the regular here. Never seen that call before. Offensive face mask. <laughs> you really don't have to coach that. You don't have to spend time telling your running backs not to grab the... I think intentional, too. That's why the 15 yards, usually on defense, uh, unintentional, you get the five. All right, it's so a first down. Gilbert into the ball game. Arizona now will exercise their final timeout. So a tad bit disorganized. So as Arizona takes a timeout, we will too. Stick around. We've still got 10 minutes, 11 seconds remaining in this one. I'm the Wildcats get a 63-yard jaunt out of Anton Carter, but on the way down, he grabbed the face mask of Ryan McNeil, a 15-yard penalty. And the Wildcats, first and 10, on the Miami 34-yard line. Billy Prickett, same play. Hands to Carter again. It's red well this time. Rusty Medeiros comes across the line to grab Carter. Ten minutes remaining in the ballgame. Arizona really not an option team anymore and probably won't be the rest of the year on the based on the performance of Billy Prickett here in this ballgame. They're more like Miami as far as offensive scheme and set right now. They're running a lot of single back with trips to one side or the other and sometimes some doubles. Uh, say, uh, flankers on each side, which they have right now. No tight end. Cricket. Going after Vaughn. Vaughn had fall, fallen down. Tough call. Here he is. He's uh, wide open and just tried to stop in his tracks. Right there. He slips. Ball is right on the money. Almost had a chance to catch it sitting down. That'll bring up third and 12 for Arizona. Tough route now for Arizona. 12 yards, a little deeper pass. They've been throwing shorter passes throughout the night. Cricket. Down at about the 35, 36 yard line. Medeiros again with the stop. Try to like duck it. in a few. I'll oh, go ahead, coach. They tried to fake that uh, forward pitch and keep and throw, and uh, Miami was well adjusted and ready for it. Try to duck in some Big E scores. Virginia Tech 41, Louisville 13. East Carolina upended Pittsburgh 24-23. Boston College got by Army 28-17. Cricket. And a big hit. And another Wildcat shaken up. It's an incomplete pass. That's Roderick Lewis now playing some tight end, and he really didn't have any room to run, you know, with the 12 yards they needed. That's five, what, four or five tight ends for Arizona this year. Lewis, Lamar Harris, Mike Bundy, Barry Julian, and Richard Griffin. 
you know, it threw to him. He was on the run. He had a chance to maybe make some yardage, but uh, Miami had really converged on that. And I don't think Billy Prickett picked it up. But on his performance tonight, I'm sure he's probably going to be the Arizona quarterback for the remainder of the year, unless he gets hurt. And I think the offensive scheme of Arizona will change uh, to fit his package, which looks like uh, single back, and they'll look more like Miami. Hopefully they can play like Miami out of that particular set. Well, the Hurricanes, again, boy, you like that out of Toretta. Toretta had about, oh, 35 yards ahead of him where he could have run. He wanted to pass the ball. Great fake, and Jamil uh, just really took out after the uh, running back because uh, Miami's been hurting him with that particular uh, maneuver. And as you indicated, he was all alone. He had plenty of time to pick his way and decide who he's going to throw to. And again, a good pass right in the hands. A couple more scores of note. Syracusa defeated Rutgers 21-7. Two Big East teams. And a little dump across the middle. Bell on the run now. He's got plenty of room. Oh. Tony pushed him out was Heath Bray. So how many completions on that, but every time they needed some yardage, uh, that's there for them because if they, anytime they catch Arizona on his own or even man to man, he's coming across wide open on that middle and Arizona's really dropping in the secondary and that's just been open every time they've run. It's remarkable Heath Bray hanging in there for Dick Tomey. And it's part of the story here. And for people listening to this in Miami, you say these guys are like a broken record, but when you consider all of the injuries week after week, day after day, they are still hanging in, playing hard, and I guess that's all the coaches can ask them to do. And that's all they do. Right down the middle, a little bit too tall. Daryl Spencer was Toretto's Toretta's. No tight end in that the offensive set, and Arizona really handles that better than they do when that tight end's in there because they have a tendency to drop too much and they don't have any release man right in here. You know he's got to go deep with it. Coming in to make that hit on Toretta was Pulu Pumele. There are the numbers. 50%, he came in at about 55%. 555 was his percentage. A little quick in. Bobby Bird collects his first reception of the night. That's Bobby's fifth reception of the year. He gives him just under 50 yards of receptions for 1991. He's a senior. Eight minutes remain in the game. Clock running. 36-9 Miami over Arizona. <laughs> The tight end's in here. Be interested to see if they drag him across the middle again. Instead, they give straight ahead. Larry Jones carries it across the 30-yard line. Out. Now well, it depends on the spot now. I think they're going to spot it down so Miami has a first down. I think the Hurricanes are going to call a timeout. Let's see. Illegal motion. Offense. Still third down. Well, it's a flag instead. Although, quite frankly, I'm looking for the flag. Doesn't make much difference. It brings up a third down and seven for the Hurricanes. Six defensive backs for Arizona. Tight end for Miami. Toretta. Under pressure. Let's see, was it a catch? The question is, was it a catch? It was, and the ball now belongs to Arizona. Keishan Johnson comes up with it. Horace Copeland caught the ball, and Johnson with the fumble recovery. It's the first turnover for Miami, and uh, coming late in the ball game, Arizona really needed to on defense get maybe two or three of these, but no interceptions against Toretta. Maybe call that an interception as a fumble comes after the tackle. 
but again, forcing the Miami to run a lot of plays, not being able to score, strike as quick as they have been during the season. Bundy in there now, tight end for Arizona. Cricket on first down, gives to Gilbert, he's got a little space. Runs across for a first down after the 41-yard line. Good pickup for Craig. Craig Gilbert, a senior, really having a, a good ball game and probably uh, deservedly so. Two tight ends for Arizona and a little trap play running to the left. Mike Bundy had a good block down there to make that possible. Terrace Harris, a sophomore, made the stop. Dennis Erickson getting onto the bench now. And they stay with that set. Two tight ends. Single back. You get to Gilbert again. All three tough yards for him before he's brought down again. The clock continues to run. 6.45 remaining. Mark Caesar out on the field with Anthony Hamlet. And Banquo McDuff. Well, of course, we got McDuff here. McDuff is the uh, Arizona defensive coordinator. Larry McDuff. Yep, so we got... 67 yards for Craig, not bad. And that's particularly his career best. Well, it's not bad, particularly for who he gained him against. This won't work. Well, when you figure Miami only gives up 100. Render, uh, render unto Caesar what is his. Number 76, Mark Caesar, in on that stop. Well, Miami only gives up that's 105 yards a game, and Gilbert has a 60 of that, so that's pretty good. That's Frank Costa down in the bullpen right now. He's a fresh maybe slow up. He's played in five of Miami's six previous games to give you what well, would figure. Costa is the heir apparent to the throne after Toretto leaves. And a good one. All the same mold. 6'3, 4, not the same weight. 6'4, 214 yeah. or 15. 6'4, 214. They pull him out of the same mold. And they got a hail, a true freshman who's on the traveling squad because uh, they're down to three quarterbacks from Forte who was battling Toretto for that starting the quarterback position and left the team and went to Rutgers. Out of the eye, Prickett. Is brought down again from behind, Darren Prime. He's just a sophomore. He enjoyed that. 6'4", 245 pounder. Probably runs the 40 in about three seconds. Well, you might be right. And uh, they rotate eight, they got eight defensive linemen that they rotate. So their younger players are getting playing time and experience. And they're again all about the same size. 6'4", 248, to 268. Well, the frustration grows. Adam Grand out on the pitch. Aaron to get him. Grand got away with it, I think. Adam Grand, now the question is, was it running into or roughing? Yeah, one's an automatic There's first down, the other's only going to be five, so they have to kick it again, or maybe they get a first down. Well, it looks like it's the big one. Just taking a look at the preliminary from... Now Arizona's running off the field, so they would think they were going to get another shot with the, with the football. Good. Well, Arizona blocked a punt earlier in the ball game. Only came out with two points with it as it rolled. Uh, weren't able to gain possession before it got uh, out of bounds in the end zone. So ended up with two instead of six, and that was early in the ball game, and that uh, might have been a difference uh, a little bit as far as scoring is concerned. 36-14. You don't talk about the points you read about in the newspaper. Of course, the foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. But the mood around this particular community, and, and quite frankly, those who are interested in college football, was how many points would Miami score? After watching Washington and UCLA rack up 108 so far in the month of October, what could this Miami team do here tonight? Quite frankly, for Arizona come off the field, if it stays 36 or somewhere in that neighborhood, it's not a bad night. Love it. With a couple of moves, and he's going to have another first down. For the Wildcats inside Miami territory. Well, there's a running back that hasn't had a lot of opportunity this year because Arizona does have a, a stable of pretty good running backs. A couple, three of them are hurt right now. This is a guy that had a pretty good ball game against USC last year for Arizona. Seven carries for 52 yards, and uh, he's getting some playing time here in place of the true freshman, Antoine Carter. And we'll give it to Love it again. And another game for Lovett, a sophomore from Franklin, 
High School in Los Angeles. Well, next week, uh, Miami gets West Virginia, a new member of that Big East Conference also, who lost pretty good to Penn State today. Miami has already beaten Penn State. Mm -hmm. Arizona, homecoming against Oregon State. Miami fans and the coaching staff and the players have not had too many nail biters this year, that's for sure. I think they got a couple coming up. Yeah. Get down to that schedule. Florida State. Pass is complete. Across the way to Lamar Lovett, the brother of Lamont Lovett. One of them is catching passes. The other one is rushing for first downs. Another first down for the Wildcats. I can go back offense right now. And this is probably what they'll use the rest of the season. Uh, in the third quarter and fourth quarter, they've been able to throw some passes. And I think that's a big plus with Billy Cricket. He's done a great job here tonight for Arizona. And the shuttle. This is Carter. Carter picks up about eight yards. Inside the 20-yard line of Miami. Hamlet and Harris combined to make the stop. That'll bring up a second down and two for Arizona. Now, one of the interesting things, we, we've we tended tonight to marvel at Arizona's ability to gain yardage on the ground. However, they really have been doing pretty well at that. The average doesn't work out because they've had some big losses on the ground as well. And they have, and especially against Washington in that game. You know, half of their carries were no gainers. And, uh, here tonight, they've had very few no-gainers. Right, here's Love it again. Fairly well read by Miami. We spoke too soon. Yep. They might have picked up one yard on that. We'll bring up a third down and one at the 15-yard line. But that's that delay counter that's been a very good play for them uh, tonight. Gilbert and Carter, Carter check back into the ball game as Kerwin Francis and Matt Britton. A couple of guys getting a chance to play tonight on the road. I think Edwin Arizona have been able to build some continuity in their offense. So they haven't been able to do that the last three weeks. And I think that this should help them as they look to those next four ball games coming up. Well, the give was ahead. The stop was behind. And two no-gainers in a row, and that was Craig Gilbert. I formation, which they ran early in the ball game. Wildcats have accomplished one important uh, feat in this drive. Coming up is the 13th play of the drive, and we're under two minutes left in the game. So the thought of Miami scoring 40, 50, 60 points tonight <laughs> will be dashed. Single back. Now we'll dismiss 40 just yet. That's not going to work. Little mix up in the backfield. A big loss for the Wildcats. Craig Gilbert is swarmed down. Miami will take over at the 20-yard line, and we'll see about Arizona holding Miami at 36 points. It will be interesting to see what Dennis Erickson has in mind. He's going to bring on a new quarterback now. By the way, Britton and Golden made the stop for Miami. But Frank Costa comes into the ballgame. You won't want to bring a kid in necessarily just to sit on it. He wants to get some activity. Costa... Passes the ball at about 70% efficiency. He's 17 of 24. And what's scary about him is a freshman and second string quarterback. Now let's see what he does on first down. Gives straight ahead. And the ball is locked. Arizona picks it up. Now they're rolling him down, I believe. Let's see. It appears that the back judge is going to rule the ball carrier down. Miami will hold on to the football. The clock remains in motion, though. That's important for Arizona now. 43 seconds remain in this one. I wonder if Costa's going to take one shot at it right now. They got two tight ends in there. The give is to Patton. Patton is upended. At the 25-yard line, that might be it. Miami need not snap it again. I doubt that it will be snapped again. The Hurricanes' record now will be seven wins against no losses on the horizon for them. West Virginia at Florida State, at Boston College, and then home to finish it up against San Diego State. 
Dick Tomey and Derek Dennis Erickson will have a quick Miami chat. 36. Renew the acquaintance they've had over two different conferences now. Whack in the pack. And onward and upward they go. The final score here once again tonight. Erickson's Hurricanes 7-0. The Wildcats fall to 2-5. and five. As the Hurricanes defeat Arizona tonight 36-9 in their first ever meeting, we will have more from Arizona Stadium, and we'll wrap this one up right after this concluding timeout. At Arizona Stadium tonight, the University of Miami makes history in their own right with their victory in the state of Arizona, as we mentioned earlier on tonight. The Hurricanes had lost in the Grand Canyon State both times in the Fiesta Bowl. They lost to UCLA back at 85, 39, 37, and to Penn State in the National Championship game back in 87, that final 14 to 10. You might recall that one very well. And tonight, they get their win tonight over against the Miami Hur against the Arizona Wildcats by a final score of 36 to 9. And coach, I guess the, the one saving grace for Arizona, uh, although you do find out you've got more people hurt, uh, Barry Julian will undergo surgery and be out for the season. Uh, Mike Bundy had to move across, so injuries stayed the same. But however, they did hold the Hurricanes to a reasonable amount of offense and, and move the ball at least for one good drive. I think that's the big thing for Arizona. They showed some progress. They were making some improvement, and that should help them. You see, they settled in, into some kind of an offense. So uh, moving that ball at 80-yard drive in the third quarter has to be a big plus. Uh, they were more physical. They haven't been as physical in the last two ball games against UCLA and Washington. That's a big plus for Arizona. So I think they can look ahead with some progress made here tonight against a very, very good football team. On the other hand, Miami comes in as heralded. Big play team. Toretta shows us something as a quarterback, throwing some great passes under great pressure. Williams comes in as a punt returner and shows that he can return the punt. So big plays on offense. And then as advertised on defense, they were very, very aggressive and uh, dominated the line of scrimmage, you know, when they needed to. They made the big plays on defense. So we saw something come from both football teams. You know, outstanding football game, really, from Arizona's standpoint, and a big win for Miami. Be interesting, too. Some people who want to uh, make some discussion of this, the common opponent for Washington and uh, Miami this year is the Arizona Wildcats. What will this game play into their discussions? It doesn't matter really to us right now. We will be back to Arizona Stadium after this final timeout. Hey. 